It's almost like I'm right here or something. It's almost wow. like you're right here. Do 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 do. Hi! Happy hey. New Year! What he said. It's me and. Zero. It's zero! Hi, 20 Uno. Hi, Tempest. Hi, Jordan. Hi, Goat. Hi, GD. We're discoing. Hello. So, so. Disco Inferno. Zero's here to help me through the character creator, which I didn't even know there was a character creator, so I'm pretty excited to make my ideal self. Happy New Year! Angry! Yeah. Hi, G-Cookie. Hi, T. Nothing, nothing says New Year like bringing back Disco. Am I right, guys? Yeah, yeah are, are you, you are right. Disco's coming back, and it's going to be Disco Fever. So here's the menu screen. Wow. It's gorgeous. Oh, Squiggly Business. Hello. So I guess we're just going to hop right in. Oh, you're seeing everything with a delay, though, aren't you, Zero? So. I am, yeah. Oh, yeah! Not to be hyperbolic, but this is one of the best games ever made. Ooh. 20 Uno, thank you. I'm really excited to play one of the best games ever made. I agree with that statement. I, I yeah. truly believe... I truly believe that a game like this will never come again. Really? I've been I, playing I a lot of these kinds of games, because everyone's like, yo... Outer Wilds, life-changing. And I'm like, okay, I'll change my life. Disco Elysium, life-changing. I'll change my life. I'm clicking new game right now. Oh, wowzers. So you see the we got uh, three thinking? archetypes, yeah. And okay. You can go ahead and glance those. Obviously, we're going to go to create your own. Create our own, yeah, yeah. Always the fun option. Inland Emperor, Empire. Oh, I want to be sensitive. I'm sensitive, Aubrey. Ooh. We can, we, can, we can still make you sensitive. We'll just make you varying degrees of sensitive, I suppose. Can I be... Customizable sensitive. Can I have great physique and sensitivity? <laughs> With no intellect or motor motorics? You could, if you want. Just dumble, dumble door through it? Um, yeah. We, we, we don't have to think too hard about this. You can come back to this before we fully commit to it. Okay. Uh, the most you can do right now is six, and the lowest you can do is obviously one. So feel free to do preliminary. If you think this looks like D&D, &D, like strength, dex, con, the ability to score stats, yeah. you you would be, that would be for good reason, because it basically is for this game. Okay. Because uh, this game, I believe, was originally intended or is a tabletop game. Oh, is it? Uh, yeah, and that's very evident once you see the the, the skill system as well as uh, the ability scores here. Okay. So is I got two, three, five, two. Let's go with that. Okay. For now, we yeah, you can go ahead in the next screen. You can, you can change that later before we fully commit. Whoa! Look right, at so all yeah. the things. You got your twenty-four. Skills spread across your your all your stats. Yeah, I see that. This and artwork this is, is crazy. Yeah, I know the oil painting style is is fantastic. And I'll go ahead and say what I think is the coolest part of your stats that no other game has done, as far as I know. In okay. that, your twenty four stats here are also your RPG party members. What? They That's they chime cool. in. They chime in. They each. They have their own personalities, and they will. Whoa! They are your party members that will show up during Hi, dialogue and stuff like that. And Niani, game Ooh. good. Yum. End of donation. Thank you, Angry. That makes sense. So this sort of, if we're going, this is whoa! One of those games that truly changed me. Ludwig, I can't wait to be changed. <laughs> electric, electric chemistry is is goat. GD says, yeah. yeah. Electric, electric him. That's how uh, it's going. So it's sort of like um, Kill the Princess a bit, where you have different aspects that talk to you and, and give you thing different things. Go to Party yeah. Planet, love and be loved to dr buy drugs. So you've got, a, <laughs> you got your overview when you click over them, and yeah. you see on the upper right the info tab, you get a more detailed description. I was thinking we can, wow. now it's my turn I was thinking to say we can go through one by one from top to the bottom. Beforehand. Sure. Hi, Jody. Yeah, right. Me too. 
let's let's have a quick look. So, so we got another, intellect. Yeah. Another interesting thing about how this game handles stats mm -hmm. is there are upsides and downsides to having stats be high. Right? Okay. So does does this mean that the optimal way to play is have every like be a jack of all trades? No. But it does make for an interesting gameplay mechanic that having a stat be really high has potential downsides. So let's look at Oh I see. Uh, it's logic, yeah. Yeah. You you can see uh at the second paragraph for all of these. It says, right. uh, yeah, high levels logic will be able to solve even the most complicated puzzle. You'll be very proud and, and thus susceptible to intellectual flattery. <gasps> For those blinded by their own brilliance often miss important clues. With low levels of logic, you're going to have a hard time solving even the simplest puzzle. Good, uh, Even if you find the pieces, good luck putting them together. That's cool. Okay. My intellect's kind of low, but that's fine. I don't mind that. This is. I think we're going to... We're going to be this, I think. So, yeah. Encyclopedia. Lo logic is, you know, your ability to deduce things, to lock yeah. things through. Yeah. Encyclopedia is trivia or, like, history knowledge. They're your history checks and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, if it's if it's too high, your your brain is going to be giving you random useless trivia when you're trying to focus on stuff at all Whoa. times. Whoa. Who, who's like that, eh? So, so it's like someone will be trying to give you an, an alibi or something of where they were, and they say like, "Oh, I was getting this uh, gum down at the corner store or something like that." Did and you then, know this gum was produced in 1947? <laughs> kind exactly. of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> the jingle of the gum is ba 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 the fresh maker. <laughs> See, the cultural significance of this gum during the Great Depression is that, and then I'll go on. And you're like, you but really? how does this help me solve the case? And that's the neat it part. It doesn't. It does anyway. it. <laughs> Did so I tell you that they, they use recycling packaging because of uh, a, a, a lawsuit they had received? <laughs> yeah, someone choked on this gum in 1987. That's anyway, hilarious. So rhetoric, rhetoric at high levels. Your, oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah your, your ability to do intellectual debate, elect, intellectual persuasion. Ah, uh, scrum debate. Yes. Bingo. At high levels, rhetoric will make you an impressive political beast. One whose beliefs are impenetrable, which is to say, one whose mind will not change, one who will calcify. With low rhetoric, though, you'll have a hard time shooting down any argument. Nailing people to their testimonies will be nigh impossible. I feel like having a low intellect is good for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it plays to my strengths and weaknesses. Hi, Sandra. Drama, though. Drama is... Oh, drama. Well, Let's get to the drama. One of my personal favorites. That's Hello, Sandra. Uh... Your ability to lie and how theatrically you do it. Oh, that's that is what fun. Drama, that is what drama is about. Uh, drama is one of my favorite like par party members. To, I to I understand. At high levels of drama, you may uh, may render you an insufferable thespian. <laughs> one prone to hysterics and bouts of paranoia. For to know the world is a stage, is to know that truth is vanity. However, with low drama, you cannot lie or discern when others lie. And a cop who can't do either is a cop who's soon going to be lying six feet under. <laughs> That's yeah, fun. So high drama sometimes is like, it just wants you to lie just for the sake of lying. <laughs> just because it's fun. Yeah, I love because that. Because it's fun. I think lying I'm, is fun. I think I'm going to get drama, but I want to read the rest of them too. So yeah. we're on to conceptualization. I, that's that. That's this skill is also could be quite up your alley because okay. it's it's for the art people. Oh, your ability art. to to understand and like recreate art, architecture, okay. all that kind of stuff. Okay. If you have it too high, you get a little too eccentric. <laughs> Makes you go big, perhaps too big. It, uh, it is ostentatious, demanding grand displays. I live life when you can uh, can throw yourself into a live volcano. <laughs> okay. At low levels, however, you'll be unable to see the world in a creative light. You'll be unable uh, to contribute to conversations in an art gallery. Only boring people will invite you to their dust parties. Only boring people invite me to their drug parties? I don't want to go to boring drug parties. That's fun. Visual calculus. Uh-oh. Yeah, cool for this is, scientist. Yep, this oh. is the cop show, kind of like they recreate the crime scene. You see, like the lines recreating the crime scene in their head, following the bullet passing and all that kind of jazz. Okay. This is the, yeah, pretty straightforward. If this stat's too high, 
you get lost in your cool like cop show diagrams yeah. and then just kind of miss things right in front of you. You're too caught up in the big picture. Okay. So sometimes you go BBC Sherlock. Basically. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think I want drama. I think we're going to go drama for intellect. I have... You pick one signature skill overall to get an extra point to. Okay. Uh, there's a there's another mechanic I'll explain at the end as well. Okay. Uh, but for now, we'll keep going with running down these skills. So oh, next wow. is... you only pick one. Oh. Yeah. Oh. One overall. Oh. That's, that's, yeah, that's important. Uh, so next is volition. It's your ability or your, the, the stat that measures sticking to what's morally right and good to your code and okay. stuff like that. Okay. If you're if you're too low, obviously you kind of you don't follow the rules, basically if you have low volition. And okay. if you're if you're too high, you're too rigid. You're too inflexible. Okay. I understand, so, yeah. Makes you hyper sane. Yeah. When you're about to get funky, it keeps you normal. It's a bit of a party pooper. At low levels, however, you have little morale. Without it, You'll be profoundly unstable, falling apart at the seams as you make irreversible mistakes. Ooh. Okay. So, as well, I should mention this. Okay. So, you have two health bars in the game. Okay. One one is physical health, one is mental health. Okay. Much like real Vol life. Yeah. Volition is going to be your mental health bar. Whereas endurance is going to be your physical health bar. That makes sense. That makes a lot so of sense. Keep, yeah, just keep that in mind. You know, when we're making the final decisions, uh, I had, I was a wuss. I had like two in in physique. So, oh, I, oh. <laughs> that, that has just pros and cons. Yeah, pros know? and cons. Zero's just helping me walk through the character creator. Zero's got lots of insight here, so it's nice. It's nice to have yeah. you. Just uh, give him some insight and some like general non-spoiler maybe like advice on how to treat the game yeah okay so uh, I, i'm on island empire inland empire inland this empire is stat, that's what this I is said. a stat I, this is a stat i also thought you'd appreciate yeah yeah this is, a, this is a stat that measures your sense of imagination <gasps> imagination that's exciting so obviously, if it's if it's too low, you're dull. You're dull as hell. You got no sense of imagination. Yeah. If it's too high, you get really lost <laughs> in your in your own sense of imagination. So if someone's like, oh, like someone died in that house 20 years ago and now it's haunted, Inland Empire will fully believe that that shit's haunted and make fantastical stories about how a ghost haunts that house. I love that. Oh no, maybe I want that. <laughs> it's nice to have conversations with your clothing. I talk to things all the time. So uh, I have one back CD, like piece of advice. Okay. Have this at four. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Zero wants this stat at four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, the thing is, I was thinking of upping my psyche because it, it's more in line with what I... I think I yeah. like. Yeah, we, we can we can return to the previous stream when we're when we've gone through all the stats. Yeah, so you, can, you can adjust it. Uh, but that that is my one piece of like directly back CD advice. Zero wants this stat at four. <laughs> yeah, I was because I'm like three feels a little too low. I've, I I'm fine with intellect and motorics being two, but I'm like I think I need two fours instead of a five and a three. I I did like four four two two when I played. Yeah, so that's, that's just... yeah, that's what I'm doing. It's gonna be fun. Uh, I, like I tried that. to tailor the. Okay, you'll be back? No, no, I like that. I... <laughs> oh, you like that? Uh, empathy. Straightforward stat. You know what that means. Uh, if empathy is too high, though, then you will literally feel the pain of others. You will harm yourself <laughs> like when people are, are, are sad and stuff because you, too, will feel their pain. That's, that's exciting. Yeah. Uh... You'll cry for their sorrows. Punch walls to relieve their angers. I thought we weren't going to be playing Life is Strange just yet, but here we are. Be an empath! I'm an empath! Okay. Yeah. This That's is what, That was one of my highest stats for sure. Uh, for better or for worse. I love uh, it. It's it's a cool way to play. Oh, bye. Yeah. Bye, Neo. <laughs> Authority. This is... Oh, boy. This is how your ability to establish your authority... The problem... If it's too high... That you will start demanding authority. Ah, uh, been there. Forcing your authority on others. This is good sometimes, bad sometimes, obviously. Yeah, and yeah. 
an interesting, you know, thing about having stats be characters or in the as the voices in your head is sometimes they will actually clash, right? That makes sense. For instance, for instance, empathy and authority, right? <laughs> yeah. They just, they just naturally wouldn't get along sometimes. So worth keeping that in mind, I guess. Uh, Esprit de cool. Hopefully I didn't butcher that. Light isn't here, so. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> light's not here. Let's speak French. <laughs> yeah, Pluton le mail, the omelet du fromage. Anyway, Esprit de cool. Uh, oh, hi. It's your ability to understand and empathize with your fellow cops, understand cop culture, uh, and stuff of that nature. Hello, Clay. Uh, this stat, great stat for understanding Kim. That makes sense, yeah. Your, your buddy here. So that's that's a big reason why I kept that, because Kim is my life. Uh, <laughs> no homo. Uh, oh, moving on. Travis, hi. Ooh, Ooh 59 months. Hi, oh my god, 59 months is glory to Nyankind. To both Travises. Holy crap. Thank you, Travis and Travis. Amazing game. Gonna be a great time. Thank you, Travis. I'm really excited. I'm really excited. Right. So we're Suggestion. All... Yes. Suggestion is another persuasion skill. Suggestion is more like a charismatic persuasion, right? Whereas drama is deception. Rhetoric is using logic to persuade someone. Suggestion is persuasion through, like, charisma. Inception. Yeah, basically. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay, that's cool, that's cool. Now yeah. we're on to the bodies. Oop. Yeah, physique. Endurance. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Your uh, uh, ability to take hits and whatnot. Again, as I mentioned earlier, this is your physical uh, health bar. Uh, this is, yeah, if it's too high, you're kind of condescending <laughs> towards people yeah. that can't take, that aren't as, uh, don't have as much endurance as Why you. Why, you weak little man? Similar to physical instrument, which we'll get to in a little bit. Pain threshold, straightforward again. Yeah, the physical much... ones seem pretty, except for electrochemistry, which is kind of funny. <laughs> electrochemistry, shivers, and half-life. Well, those are, those are... Those are the three where I'm my... like, these don't seem quite as, uh, <laughs> straightforward as the rest my... of these. Those are some of my, fa my favorite stats in the game. They're really funny, but we'll get to those in a bit. Uh, pain threshold, physical instrument. Pain threshold, straightforward. Yeah. Physical instrument. How good are you with blunt objects and lifting shit? Okay. Physical instruments. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Phys yeah. Too much phase instrument. You also become condescending. Uh, pain threshold, if that's too high, you start becoming a bit of a masochist with how much damage you can take. Because you're like, I want to feel something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, electrochemistry. Oh boy, this is the party stat. This is yeah, G said. <laughs> G said this was the goat stat earlier. Yeah. And part of it is because it, it's the fun stat. It's, it measures how uh, resistant and familiar you are with drugs. Yeah. And alcohol and all that stuff. The obvious drawback with this one is if, if you put this stat <laughs> too high, that means you're very familiar with, with drugs, drugs and, and alcohol. alcohol. Yeah. Unleash it's the like, beast. <laughs> Electrochemistry is like, hey, there's like a drop of alcohol. There's like a drop of booze on the table. You want to lick it? Yes. And then. <laughs> no, that was that was evidence. Don't drink the drinks off the table. Okay, that's fun. Shivers, cool for Shivers. city lovers. The wisest of the street wise. The genuinely supernatural. Supranatural. Yeah, Shivers Ooh. is is a really interesting voice. That's and conceptually like. One of, if not the coolest stat in, in, out of all of these. Because okay. It, it measures, it measures your, your street smarts as well as how connected you are with the streets. Yeah, it seems in, interesting. In an abstract sense as well. So you could be looking at something and then you will visualize in your head uh, a similar or relatable scenario in the city like hundreds of miles away that's cool yeah your connection with the city that's neat but your connection with others is lessened yeah in other words your your ear to the street is too close to the street half light cool for You're high strung fighting. investigators shoot now ask questions later cops surprise it's haters your, <laughs> it's your fight or flight response baby <laughs> fight or flight coming through fight or flight bah. 
too high a, a half light, that means you're paranoid as hell. Yeah. Every every shadow is out to get you. You know, I feel safe. Why is your gun safety off? It's because you feel safer with the safety off. Yeah. That okay. Kind of thing. Okay. That's fun. Mo and now we're into the motorists. On. Yeah. Hand eye coordination, perception, reaction speed, side warfare. Hand eye coordination. That that's pretty straightforward. Yeah. It seems like. Seems like. Uh, <laughs> Disaster perception. man. Perception, find detail detectives, sensualists, urban scavengers. Ooh. Uh, okay. Yep. It's, it's the same as like in a D&D &D situation. Reaction, Reaction speed. speed. Yeah. Shot dodgers, thinkers on their feet, pinball heads. Reaction speed makes your twitch reflex freakishly good. However, when your body acts before your mind, innocent situations can turn bad fast. Oh, no. You're high strung, overly alert. And at low levels, you won't be the one shooting first, which is probably mean you won't be shooting at all. Yeah. Now, Savoir Fair, this seems more uh, obtuse. Yeah, so Savoir, yeah, Savoir Fair is, is stealth as well as uh, acrobatics. Yeah. <laughs> the most stylish douchebag. <laughs> yeah, you become a show off if this stat's too high. Yeah, okay. Basically. If you got it, flaunt it. Plot it. Yeah. <laughs> Interfacing. Hey, yeah. Your ability to deal with machines, steal, steal uh, from pockets, un undo or lock pick locks, that kind of stuff. Okay, that makes sense. And then finally, we have composure. Uh, this is uh, kind of straightforward. Military. Your ability to keep a stone face. Okay. And if that stat's too high, you won't be able to turn the stone face off. Okay. Basically. Yeah. It's it's just resting resting bitch face forever. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, I I think I want to pump the psyche to at least four. Uh, I want. Yeah, weak. Good. Good. Oh, do I want five psyche? No, I want four. Mm, I don't want. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, I should mention one more thing. Okay. What? Uh, regarding the stats. So go back to the the screen with all the stats on it. Okay. This and you notice how above each stat name there are little uh, hollow diamonds in the center? I see that, or, yes. So those hollow diamonds represent how many times you can level up the stat. Oh, that's... I was wondering what they meant because it, it's... So, yeah, okay. yeah, the ability score points on the previous screen do not just represent your starting scores for each of the stats. It but represents it's... your stat caps. Okay, the potential you have for them. Now, equipment and other stuff can modify both your stats as well as your stat caps. But this is the easiest way to, to obviously... To do it. Yeah. So, uh, if you want to do like something crazy like 5, 1, or whatever, go nuts. But keep the stat caps in mind. Okay. I think 2424 because it's, it's 2024. Why not 2424 for our stats, eh? I like that. Two intellect, like that. four psyche, two physique, four motors. I thought we were going to be strong, but we're going to be deft instead. Yeah, <laughs> I, I too had two physique. Uh, so what do you think about <laughs> for your uh, your signature skill? Oh, man. Because all I wanted was the four in England. For all, if you can do whatever you want with the... Yeah, like the thing is, I think... I, I, I love talking to inanimate things. It's my favorite. So I'm thinking that... But also, I want to know Kim really well, so Esprit de Corpse seems really good because we have the Kim cutout. Oh, I was going to put Kim on behind me. One second. Oh, yeah. We, we should do that. Uh, yes, Ludwig, we do have the streamer mode uh, for the music. I had to untie him from his jolly prison. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's literally right in the wrong place. Putting, putting the point in the drama could be fun. I, I, I do... I do confess drama is one of my, like, I love that. I love drama. <laughs> you love drama? I do. I'm a dramatic bitch. I just have low intellect, drama. though. Yeah, true. I'm not smart. I want to talk to a tree. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to go with. Put, put that in the shirt. Put that in the shirt. <laughs> I want to talk to a tree. Yeah. So I think I'm going to go Inland Empire because right. uh, I want to talk to a tree. <laughs> I dig it. 
Cool for dreamers, right. paranatural investigators, mental creators. Yeah, I'm setting so, it my signature. Yep. Ooh, I and get now, a point that, in it. And this is the last part of the character creation stream, so I will sign off and let you do your thing. Enjoy the game. Okay, thank you for for hanging out with me while I did that. No problem. Thank you for letting me nerd out. Two You're days welcome. After, two days after I forced everyone to nerd out with me on Fate Slash Pass. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the year of zero, baby. Oh, yeah. There's a zero in the year. Totally yes. in my ear. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, no problem. Okay. Bye. Bye. Except for not all of you. Bye. Okay. So, we're going to talk to a tree. Can I convince you to strong? No. <laughs> Nobody strongs. Oh, man. Nobody strongs? Okay. We're gonna be we're gonna be smart. We're gonna go himbo. We're going himbo. But I'm still I'm gonna still talk to a tree. And then I'm gonna pick up that tree and we're gonna run. Oh, lower the game audio? Yes, we can. I it's hard to tell how loud things are for everyone. The Furies are at home in the mirror. It is their address. Even the clearest water is deep enough to hurt above. There is nothing. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscience ferments in it. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Thank you, ancient reptilian brain. I love it. I can scroll down really far for no reason. Ever. Oh, that's why. Never, ever. Never, ever, ever? Never, ever, ever, baby. Simply keep on non-existing, I guess. And an audience amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. I have created the uh, volume. Let me know if it's okay. Uh, give me, give me, give me, give me some more. You got it, sweet brother. Nothing upon nothing upon nothing. It's good. How about Coming you cop up some more of that sweet oblivion? Smooth. Uh, I want to get off now. I, I like pain and burning light and wanting things from people who don't want to give them to me. Do you really? Uh, don't be naive, of course not. No, I do. Let me out of the blackness. You wouldn't like it if I told you what was back there. Why'd you think you had to bludgeon yourself into oblivion? Or did you not sense yourself marinating? Poured so much on yourself, got a bit carried away, did we, Chef? Thank you, Limbic System. Fear and apprehension. You should ask us out there first. Okay. I don't care, I'm an idiot, a brave idiot. No. Tell me, tell me what is waiting for me. There's this giant ball there. An evil apes. An evil apes are juking it out on the ball. You're one of them. I am one it's of them. It's basically all just evil apes juking it out on a giant ball. That's all we all are, is evil apes. Juking it out. How small are the apes? Infinitesimally small. How big is the ball? You can't even make out it's a ball when you're juking it out. It's that large. And this duking it out, I keep hearing about. 
What is that? Time for resources. It's just a stupid expression you picked up somewhere. The part of the presentation you want to take home with you is this. You have to beat the other evil apes in the face. Or you lose. Yeah, once we get in the game, I'll do some options for the, the volumes. That's sad, Limbic System. Yes, it is. And you drowned in that sadness a long time ago. What do you mean? What do you mean drowned? You lost. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Holy crap. Holy crap. Our face is all gross. I gotta... I gotta... Change some volume options. Um, voiceover volume up. Continue. Take. Item gained. Flare cut trousers. What's this? You hear a jingle. Oh. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare cut pants. Fish them out. It says whirling in rags on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. Okay. to highlight oh cool talk to it I want to be friends with the fan this fan has two chain pull switches one ends in a tiny fan the other in a light bulb a truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades how's the audio by the way or has it been consigned there as punishment you feel as though this creature is your friend and wants to reattach itself to your neck so that you may continue your adventures together in this strange world. Ooh, it's a low chance. Oh, hello! One of my favorite games. My advice is to enjoy and not stress. This is a game where you can fail every prompt and still have a full experience. Revel! I will revel in the experience. Well, then let's grab this frickin' tie. 28% chance? I'll take it. You reach out to grab the tie. But what's this? Diffuse, radiating chest pain. Doom comes over you. Uh-oh. This is bad. Feels like sharp stones grinding in your chest and keeping you from moving. For quite a long time. Still ongoing. Now is a good time to start worrying. Finally... The pressure recedes. You find yourself covered in cold sweat and trying not to move, hoping it will keep you from dying. Yikes. The blades come squeaking to a halt. It should be easier to reach the tie now. Much easier to reach the tie. Oh no, it's happening again. <laughs> you didn't catch it, and now there's a numbness in your left arm, plus half your chest. It's even worse this time. Maybe you should stop trying to catch the tie. I'll never. Still happening. Definitely worse than the last time. Finally, the stabbing recedes. You could try doing it again to see how painful it gets. But you would probably die. A terrible mistake. Turn the lights off immediately. You can practically feel the photons burning a hole in your brain. Me and the ceiling fan aren't getting along. It's just a little hangover-induced photosensitivity. Don't overreact. Bring it on. Little black spots dance on your retinas. I can't. It's almost pleasurable. Oh, I can't even do I can't get my tie. Oh, sorry, friend. We'll never be friends again. <laughs> Is real-to-real -real tape player still on rolling empty? 
Looks like someone tore the tape out while the song was playing. A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Wow. Hot water sprays from the base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. Maybe I should touch my face. Touch it first to make sure there's nothing wrong with my face. Yeah, there is definitely something wrong with it. Oh, wait, 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 what's wrong? Where to even begin? There is the bloatedness, then the swollenness. It's like there's an upholstery of alcohol underneath your skin. At least my tongue's okay. Touch my tongue. It's not. Oh. <laughs> it's swollen and snail-like, wriggling between your fingers. Uh, I'm sorry. Bet you are. Your nose feels like a small balloon in the middle of your face. What happened? It hurts when you honk it. It doesn't appear to be a particularly tiny nose either. Not with all the drinks it's absorbed for you. Wipe the mirror. Behold. I think he's kind of good looking. <laughs> a little a little ratchet right now, but there's there's some solid structure under there. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? Uh, of course I do. It's um it's some kind of superstar. I think I'm a superstar. It appears you're also dead. Oh. There's clearly rigor mortis on your face. Oh wait. Is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? <laughs> I think it might be because I'm a superstar. <laughs> Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. No, this is what superstars do. You can't, can you? It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face, and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? Uh... Superstardom! You should check yourself for a pulse, superstar. From here, it looks like a cadaverous spasm. Check, let's, yeah, let's check for a pulse. You find no sign of life on your swollen neck. Oh! However, putting your hand on your chest reveals an irregular heartbeat. You appear to be alive for now. Um, you know what? 8%. 8% chance? Love that for us. Like the rest of you, it comes from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know for now. Impossible 3%? <laughs> Attempt to stop the expression from happening. 3%! It's too late. Oh. Like an image on film. The expression belongs to your primary motor cortex. It would take a minor neurological miracle for you to cease producing it. I guess we'll leave the mirror be. Can we take like a bath? You see bottles in the bathtub, wine, beer, and sweet liqueurs. I don't mean to oopsies be alarmist, but things aren't looking good. A shoe! I see there's a bottle on the ground, but I feel like we've had enough to drink, so I don't kind of, I, I don't want to, I don't want it. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. Assess the situation. Use your eyes. Assess the situation. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. Did I break it with my own hands? A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. 
What did this then? More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. Assess the size of the impact. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. The single green shoe you found fits the hole almost as well as your foot. Ooh. It would have also been heavy enough if thrown with force. Congratulations. You smashed the window with your own shoe. Now you only have one. If you're lucky, you could still find the other one on the balcony outside. The door to it should be outside your room. I should go get that shoe. The cool wind gushes in. Your toes curl up from the cold. Oh, what's this? Oh, it's a quest. Neat. Shoes, pants, headache. Okay. Wait, my flare cut trousers make myself a fair less? But they're cool. What's wrong with you? This magnum sized bottle of Commodore Red is empty. Oops. I keep having my. What's this door over here? Is this the door outside? I really want my other shoe. Can we take our pants off and try to get our tie again? Yeah, let's take our pants off and try to get our tie again. Those are some low-cut underwear. This fan has two... Or has it been consigned there oh, as... Locked. The pants are literally only holding us back. Time is actually moving as well, by the way. It's 8.21 in the morning. I want... Hello? There doesn't appear to be a balcony outside. What the hell were you talking about, balcony? There's something on the table. I'll, I'll take 40 cents. What is, is, what is that door? Nothing? Something? Toilet? Are you my friend? Hello, officer. The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. Officer? Am I a military personnel? Uh, no. She seems perplexed by your question. There's only one solution to this. You're a businessman. Wait, I know. I'm a businessman. Chief executive officer, right? The young woman shakes her head slowly. Okay, ch chief technical officer? No, you're a police officer, sir. Oh, you're shitting not, me. Unless you've been shitting us all this time. She takes another drag from her cigarette. You've been here for three days on official police business, no less. And what business is that? Couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. Okay, there's a twenty percent. Okay, twenty-eight percent chance of accidental heterosexualness. Knowing my luck, I'm. If I do this, I'm gonna get it, because that's just how life works for me. The words have already left your mouth. Oh, I want to have fuck with you. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? That's not even how words are used. What did you say? Come on. 
<laughs> Say it again. No, I don't want to. Come on, man. Freddy, please. One more time. I said I want to have fuck with you. Goddamn right you did. You crazy asshole, you. <laughs> what kind of cop are you? Uh, superstar cop. It has been established. Okay, that's cool. Or if I can just maybe ask you to elaborate on that superstardom a tiny bit. I sincerely think I'm a superstar. It's a theory I'm developing. I have certainly been entertained. Thank you. Whatever you are, you should stick to it. Otherwise... She extinguishes her cigarette. It's gonna suck for you later when you have to interrogate me. Why would I have to interrogate you? You've, if, uh, have you done something? And for the record, no. I didn't do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's my shoe. That's why I couldn't I couldn't pass the check because shoe. Oh. A gust of wind, a briny wind washes over you. We're near the ocean. There they both are. Two identical shoes, both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin, reunited on your feet. Uh, how do they fit? Good. They're balanced. Comfy. Feels like the only good thing about you right now, truth be told. Hey, it, it's one thing. Sometimes all you need is one thing. Yeah, the seagulls are also giving away the fact that we're near the ocean. The smell of the sea makes you dizzy. Calendar, what year is it? calendar says it's March. The year is 51. Okay. Looks like she left a nice long stub in the ashtray. It's still smoking. You should pick that fat, juicy cigarette butt from the tray. Light it up and smoke the living shit out of it. Am I a smoker? Who knows what you are? A monster. A murderer. The gnome of Jeroma. What? You feel like a smoker. Okay. Especially when you look at that juicy, succulent, seductive cigarette stub. Still smoldering deliciously. But she broke it at the filter. I can't smoke that. How very astute of you. This renders it ineffectual. You should look for a whole cigarette. Or better yet, an entire pack. Strike that. A carton. Make sure they're all healthy and able-bodied. Then smoke them all. I'm going to become friends with some or cigarettes. You could not do that. Oh. No one is making you. I should not not do that. I should I should not not do that. I should do that. You could not do that. I should not not do that. I should enthusiastically do that. Wait. Does this mean I don't want to smoke or that I do want to smoke? You can tell I didn't invest in intelligence. There's cat drama. Sorry. Well, I'll think about it. Yeah, I should do that. Good. No! Make you That's not what I wanted to do! Better. You're too old to be cool now, but find cigarettes, smoke them, blast, instantly a cool renegade man. Smoking? I don't like it. A mystical red dragon with smoke rising from his nostrils. I was agreeing with volition! Plus, smoking then gives massive bonuses. Can I undo? Can I undo that? I don't want to do that. I don't want to smoke. I don't want to smoke cigarettes. That's gross. Hi, Ozymandias. Can I knock on the door and apologize for being a, a dick? The door is closed. There is no answer. You hear the shower being turned on somewhere inside. Uh-oh. A tremendous loneliness comes over you. 
Everybody in the world is doing something without you. Swallow the emotion. The door is closed. Suppress it. Don't think about it. Yeah, we only do cool drugs. <laughs> Drama! Oh, it's because Clay closed the door on me. Cats were locked in, and they were both arguing about the door. <sighs> Did he die getting his tie yet? Almost. I almost died getting my tie. Where's my body? Time for superstardom. Time for superstardom. This is where the lyrics would be. A big old karaoke mic just waiting for someone to sing to it. The speaker is connected to the radio. The music is seasoned with static. You should totally sing karaoke here. The first chance you get. Oh yeah. Your emotions need to be expressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People need to know your vast oceanic soul. My soul is immense. Woo! So each unseen dialogue passes time and there's limited time each day. So unlike most games you play, not clicking option can be useful half. Utterly. Oh, thank you, and Angry. It needs to be heard through a PA system by other people, whether they like it or not. Ram it up their ears, says your adrenaline gland. Violently express yourself. However, dialogue options that match seemingly lead nowhere may often lead to experience and or new tasks. So it's a fun balancing act, two halves. Angry! Thank you. <laughs> this goes well with the theory that I'm a, de uh, a develop uh, that I'm developing, that I'm a down on my luck superstar Who person. Mistakenly identified as a cop for his prominent jawline. Yes. 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 Sounds likely. Absolutely. You should probably go on stage and pose for a moment when you're done with this thought. See if it works. What should I sing? You have not yet stumbled on the right lamentation, but it's out there. It'll come to you. You will wreak havoc with it. Don't worry. I was thinking maybe I could sing something happy, get the people no, going. No. Oh. Don't sing the happy song. Okay. It's stupid. Yeah. Sing the sad song. Okay. It's profound. Yeah, 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 okay. You have to find something tragic to sing first, though. Okay. You need to find some a sufficient, a sufficiently tragic tape, then play it on a boombox to memorize the lyrics, then ask the cafeteria manager to perform, preferably in the evening for more people at the bar. Get a hold of a sad song on tape. Okay. Easy. The world's full of sad things. What's this? What's that? What's this? This is a water cooler. The menu's been wiped clean. The only word, only word is Monday. Who are you? A man in his late twenties stands behind the counter, inspecting a stuffed seabird. Okay. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance, then looks down again. That was disdain in his eyes. Oh. Even now, he is purposely ignoring you. Looks like he's not a fan. Look at the stuffed bird. A competent work of taxidermy. The white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs. One of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it. Oh. Most something Oops. about it makes you feel bitter. Uh... What happened to that bird? It was me, wasn't it? Look, your buddy is over there. Uh, he looks at the doors where a man on the, in a bomber jacket is tapping his foot at the floor. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? What do you mean, my buddy? He pretends not to hear you, concentrating on the bird instead. Okay. Sometimes people don't like you, and that's fine. 
What's this? What's this? <laughs> Mess hall reserved for union members. Doors open at 16. It's 837. What's this? This royal pinball machine is unplugged. Who are you? Hello, sweetie. Oh, Lena, the cryptozoologist's wife. You shouldn't keep your colleague waiting. She nods towards the man in the orange bomber jacket. Okay. A bespectacled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You, as you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. If an assault were launched on this building right now, if the windows came crashing down and the whole world descended upon you, this man would hurl himself in death's way to save you. You are sure of this, but why? Hold on, who is he to me? He is your half-brother. <gasps> Drama! Shake his hand. Hello, I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Precinct 57. You must be from the 41st. You realize he's waiting for your name. This is your chance to come up with a really good name for yourself. Get creative. Conceptualize. Ooh, 42%. Okay. Let's see, let's see. Raphael Ambrosius Cousteau. Raphael Ambrosius Cousteau. That's a pretty good name. It's so cool. Yes, it is. Raphael Ambrosius Cousteau is one classy name for one classy cop. Say it. My name is Raphael Ambrosius Cousteau. Yes. Well. He doesn't even process what you just said and just moves on. It looks like we had a little scheduling error on Sunday. Saturday too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? Uh, you mean him and nod towards the cafeteria manager? Yeah, I just talked to him. If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Okay. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Okay. Now that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is out back, right? It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? <laughs> yes, the police. I am aware I'm a policeman. <laughs> right. And the interviews? I haven't. Okay, we'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Okay. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? Ah, uh, I don't like dead bodies. Sure, but did you take it down from the tree? No. So the body is still in the tree. This is the first time you detect a weariness in the lieutenant's voice. It is obvious he would have preferred for the body to no longer be in the tree. Where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. Um, how can you be so sure I'm from the police? I was sent here to meet a detective from Precinct 41. You have the insignia of the citizen's militia on your sleeve and on your back. Oh, he points at your jacket. I suppose you could be impersonating him. You could have gotten the insignia from the black market or forged it. But for now, I'm going to set those possibilities aside. I'm not from the Inspectorate General. Oh, you said the insignia, these white rectangles, you mean? Yes. But they're just white rectangles. They're not just white rectangles. Oh. They bear a halogen watermark with the letters RCM and a pattern resembling the street grid of Revachol West. <gasps> That's the tree I'm going to become friends with, Maddie! I would ask you to step into the headlights of my motor carriage, but again, it's none of my concern. I just need you to do your job. Uh, shouldn't I have like a badge or something? You mean you don't have a badge? Uh, it, it, was, it wasn't on me when I woke up. Losing your identification card is a serious matter. Oh no. My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I would advise you to locate it as quickly as possible. But getting the body down should still take precedence. Uh, I can't remember anything. I can see you drank last night and the night before. And that you are still drunk now. Oh. But I have seen officers go through worse. Much worse. If you need something for your headache, there is a general store nearby. But as I said, the dead body should be our number one concern. A painkiller would be good about now. This thing is pulsating with discomfort. 
The best cure for a headache is, of course, morphine. They won't have that. So cigarettes will have to do. We're just gonna, we're just gonna, oh, I have a headache. I might as well do morphine. Uh, okay, let's roll. After you, officer. Lieutenant Kitsuragi is now in your party. You can talk to him whenever by interacting with him. Ooh. Yes. Uh, tell me about the case. What do you want to know? Literally anything about it. I can't remember a single thing. Maybe you can tell me what you do know to help me narrow it down a bit. I know literally nothing about it. Only what you told me before. Do you want me to brief you? Brief. Yes, that sounds good. Three days ago, the RCM emergencies desk received a report about a security guard who was found hanged in Martinez. An anonymous caller said there was a dead body behind the whirling and rags hostel cafeteria. Okay. The cadaver had been there for four days. No one had come to investigate. Yikes. During that time, the victim had been stripped of his belongings. The caller did not identify him, but used the word lynching. There is an ongoing labor dispute between the local dock workers and the logistics company Wild Pines. Okay. I was told we should approach the death as part of this dispute. Does the briefing say who the victim was? A security guard or worker of some sort okay. hired by Wild Pines. This was just hearsay from Martinez, of course. We need to find out the truth. To find who him is or it? her is one of our tasks here. For now, all we know is that the tone was muffled using a device of some sort. The desk could identify neither the caller's age nor sex. Why hide themselves? There's a strong prejudice against involving the RCM in what's seen as union matters. Okay. The dock workers' union is the de facto police in Martinez. Now it appears they've started executing too. We cannot allow that. <laughs> of course, yes. I understand everything now. Just to be clear, we are police officers. It's our job to find the killer. That's the case. Uncover and arrest the killer. Secret tasks! Would you say this is a mysterious case? No. Oh. It's not a particularly mysterious case. Why not? The deceased is a security guard for a corporation involved in a labor dispute. It doesn't take a DeLorean polymath to put the pieces together. I just don't see the case getting more mysterious than that. Uh... <laughs> okay, so the case is... Uh, the case probably isn't mysterious, but could it be... Sexy? There was some interest in this case at my station, but not for the reasons you have in mind. You seem to wish there was a... Cut this boring stuff off immediately. You know what this case is about. Oh, I guess that settles it then. Excellent. Was there anything else? Um... If we're from different precincts, why are we on the same case? I'm afraid you and I are pawns in a... A pissing competition. Oh. His disdain is clear. This man would not use such an expression otherwise. You don't know? What do you mean? I assumed you were in on it. <laughs> you know what I'm in on? Retrograde amnesia. Tell me about it. It's just stupidity. We shouldn't waste any more time on it. If you want my take, ask me after we've inspected the victim. Let it... Let it go. We just let it go. Was there anything else you wanted to know about the case? No, I have everything I need. Let's go. Good. Uh, I want to talk about you. Me? Yes, you. I don't see how my life is pertinent to the investigation. Binoclard? What's a binoclard? Someone with glasses? That's rude. We'll work better together if we have more rapport. Mm, that's a fair point. Yes, it is. All right. For the good of the investigation, what do you want to know? Um, you, you, you're wearing glasses. That's correct. That makes him a Bino clad. Completely uncop material, if you say so yourself. Glasses are cool. Are they? They are mostly just cumbersome. You could use a good, normal pair yourself. Uh... Tell me a secret about no. yourself. Oh. 
Oh, okay. The lieutenant nods. Do you ever talk with yourself? What do you mean? You know, like when you're thinking, do you ever have like conversations with like your brain? I have no idea what you're talking about. So you're saying your brain never chimes in with advice or warnings or anything? I can't say that it does, no. Oh. When I need to think, I just use my notebook. Our handy dandy notebook. The lieutenant produces his small blue notebook and idly thumbs through a few pages. That's where his conversations with himself take place. You're super lucid, yet psychedelic. You don't need office supplies to connect to your nervous system. You're special. You don't look like the other people around here. That's because I'm half Seolite, or quarter. My father's father was from Seoul. So was oh. my grandmother, but from my mother's side. It's not an interesting topic. What is Seoul? It's a part of the world, officer. A geopolitical entity and a geographic division. I told you it wouldn't be interesting. <laughs> Okay, you're only making it sound uninteresting. I still want to know more about it. You're barking up the wrong tree. I don't speak tree? the word of Seolite. I've never met either one of my grandparents, and I've never been to Seol. Oh. I'm a regular Ravachelier. Uh, Ravachelier. Okay. Good. Let's change the subject. Whoop! Our new friend Kim is so kind and understanding to detective stupid idiot man. Yeah, <laughs> like literally Aussie man. <laughs> like, oh, holy crap. I think you should know that I can't remember anything. No response. He just arches his brow. I feel like I must repeat this. I don't remember anything. There was heavy drinking involved. Have you tried concentrating on something other than your personal affairs? There is a sudden harsh edge to his voice. Like he's tired of hearing about your personal affairs. <laughs> okay. Focus on other people's troubles, not your own. That is a relief. Okay. Your heart beats twice like a fist. The serotonin deficiency makes your teeth clench. Okay, is the first option sarcasm? I think I need slash S's to understand because like, honestly, yeah, you're right. I should probably be less self-centered. <laughs> okay, then I don't want to be sarcastic. At his electronic wristwatch. A moment passes. The lieutenant glances at the. Yes, yes, yes. We're on our way. We're on our way. Oops. This keyboard is not the usual keyboard that I'm used to, so my hands aren't in the. Ooh, what is this? The soft purr of an electric juicer comes from the kitchen. Someone is working. The kitchen door is, or the bolt is at reds. Kitchen's reserved for personnel until 1300 o'clock. Summer doors closed for winter. Well, I gotta get out back somehow. Ooh, who are you? I will talk to you. Sleeping dock worker. A man is sleeping at the table wearing mud caked boots and rolled down overalls. The back of his shirt reels wild pines encircled by a large logo with a tree. We're going to be talking to so many trees. A shift? On the counter, rolled out of his open hand, you see a blister pack of headache medicine. Lieutenant, who is this? No idea. Looks like he works for Wild Pines, the logistics company who owns and operates the harbor. But why is he sleeping during the Possibly day? Possibly because there's a strike going on in the harbor. There's not much to do aside from drinking and sleeping. Okay. Bottle of rum. I want to talk to Lena, the cryptozoologist's wife. Oh. Hello, sweetie. Wait, who's sweetie? Who's sweetie? Why, you are, officer. Oh, uh... Maybe I am! And have you found anyone to be sweet to? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I have. No, let's not flirt with the cryptozoologist's wife. I'm sorry if I was being overly familiar. 
I, I know we've only just met. No, I all my options are bad. You're quite lovely. You must forgive me. I'm getting so scatterbrained. I completely forgot to introduce myself. I'm Lena. My husband Morel and I are staying with our friend Gary okay. just down the street. But okay. I come here for tea when they're away. Her eyes glitter over the rim of her glasses as she looks up, smiling. This Lena is wacky enough for the Motley Crew. Hire her on the spot. <laughs> uh, you seem to be in a chair. Yes, dear. Uh, I'm a paraplegic. Oh. A paraplegic is someone with limited or no ability to use the lower half of their body. Paraplegia is caused by spinal cord injuries like falling from a great height or a grenade explosion. Oh, thanks for clearing that up for me. No problem. She nods, smiling up at you from behind her glasses. There I love no you. There is in her voice. She accepted the curiosity her condition inspires a long time ago. Oh, was that rude? I'm definitely not going to choose how would you like to roll with me. I think that's definitely rude. I don't know if you've noticed, but I don't know where I am or what I'm doing or anything. Yes, officer. You look rather dazed. Thanks. Like a stunned fox. I shot but surely things can't be that bad. Her eyes follow your movements with some concern. I hope you're right. I hope it's not too bad. You know where we are, right? Uh... <laughs> we're dead. Haunting each other. We're ghosts. No. We're in... We're uh, the Whirling Enraged caf Rags Cafeteria. It was on That's my keys. Right. And where is the Whirling in Rags cafeteria itself located? I have no idea. We're in the city of Revshol, dear. She flashes you with a worried look. Oh, honestly, I didn't know Diddley's uh, quite about Revshol. What kind of place is this? How would I even begin to tell you? Her Revshol is the most beautiful city in the world. We're fortunate to be here, you and I. I haven't seen very many other cities personally, but... Everyone says so. Revishol is a rare jewel. This city used to rule the world, though it has seen better days. Okay. She, uh, there's a pause as she studies her expression. You must look quite lost. Speaking of history, you know what year it is, yes? Uh, it's the spring of 51. That's right, dear. How splendid. Here, take this pen. Knowledge should always be rewarded. I love you. This is literally um the the tiny elephant, the tiny elephant from Adventure Time. Her relief is palpable. She was getting pretty worried about you there, but now she relaxes her shoulders. I can tell that this Whoa. is taxing for you, so I'll just ask one more question. What regime are we living under? What mode of government? Um we are governed by intelligent machines that perform calculations to determine the freest, the freest market. Everyone hustles and grinds like a badass visionary. Oh, no. Nothing like that, dear. Oh. Revishol is a zone of control led by an alliance of foreign powers called the Coalition. We have almost no government of our own. Certainly no machines. Tree trunks, yes, tree trunks. Hello, hello. I'm so far enjoying all these people. I don't know. Still looks like there's a lot of hustling going on. Maybe she's wrong. Also. If there are no government, how come there are cops? Oh, dear. This is troubling. You really ought to know that being one yourself. There aren't any cops in Revishol. Not in the traditional sense. Okay. The status of law enforcement has been a complicated matter since the revolution. But we should stop for today, sweetie. You look like you need a break. Besides, I'm not the best person to explain the big things to anyone. She's scared now. She's realized you really are brain damaged. So how did I do? You didn't do too well, dear. Oh. You really only knew what year it is. Yeah. It does look like you're having trouble remembering things. History and places. Reality in a word. It's very odd. A sigh. The lieutenant buries his nose in his notebook. I'm not impressing anyone. But maybe a fresh set of eyes is what the world needs. Yeah, like a baby. And while I'm no doctor, 
such bouts of amnesia are often temporary, so I, I wouldn't worry too much. She means this sincerely. Worrying won't do you any good. Who could tell me more? Someone more educated in sweeping matters. Maybe you should ask. She turns to the lieutenant. No, I'm not an encyclopedia. I won't be a guide either. I'm a detective. Okay. Of course. Then I don't know. Someone rich, maybe? Wealthy people are educated. Though I don't know where you would find a wealthy person in Martinez. I've got to get going now. Of course, dear. Good luck with your case. She gives you a small wave. I love you. You're my best friend. The man with the unimpressive beard notices you approaching. He drops the ledger he was holding and turns to the lieutenant. That's rude. Mr. Gart, right? You run this place. Yes. He responds tense, tersely. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Prison 57. This is an inter-district investigation. So joining me from Prison 41. He looks to you, realizing he still doesn't know your name. As I said, Detective Raphael Ambrosius Cousteau. Right. Now, I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene. It also took you a while to call us and report a dead body. It was you who placed the call, yes? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. He looks behind a pile of coasters and just finds a slip of paper and hands it to the lieutenant. You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? What, of Martinez? No. I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. But you still know your way around, yes? In case we need directions. Yes, I know where some things are, but as I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. Sus. And I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. Sus. I didn't imply that. Detective. Yes? I have everything. You? Oh, uh, do you mean do I have questions? Ask them. Yes, yes. He means, do you have questions for me, like a police officer would? Um, who killed him? I don't know who killed him. I'm not the police. That's your job. Did you kill him? What are you, crazy? Of course I didn't kill him. Suddenly he turns up. Blood is being pushed to your muscles. You should hound him on this. Hound him hard, the prey drive says. They want me- oh god. Did you kill him, guard? Did you? No, I didn't. You can tell me, guard. You killed him, right? I didn't. Why did you have to kill him? This. What is this? Why, why did you have to kill him? Do I have to answer him? Is this mandatory? The lieutenant stands motionless. His expression unreadable. I didn't realize where this was going to be such an intense line of questioning. <laughs> Did he hurt you? Is that why? Did you get some sort of sick kick out of killing him? What are you, an idiot? I told you I haven't killed anyone. Anyone? Have you killed someone else then? He ignores you. That's fair. Where exactly is the Behind body? Behind this building, there's a courtyard. They hoisted him up on a tree there. <laughs> uh, and how did we, uh, how do we get there then? That's easy. See that door there? First you exit through that. Then, to your right, you should see a big hole in the fence. Okay. A really big one. You can get to the courtyard through there. No need for the keys. The hole is big enough for the Franco-Nigerian cavalry to fit through. Wow. Does he want you to feel guilty of making that hole? It's implied in his voice. Oh, why did Sylvie go away? She went away because none of your business. Fine. Extra fine. What's your problem with me, bruh? Why would I have a problem with you? You're a hero, cop. You're being sarcastic. Am I? Or did you ride in, take the body down, solve the murder, and not trash my hostel room? Oh my god, I did all those things? No, oh. you see, 
Actually, you didn't. Oh. You haven't done anything even remotely useful since you got here. What have I been doing then? Have you seen me? No, I haven't seen you around. I just got here, remember? Was there anything else? Are you the bartender? No, I'm not the bartender. I'm the cafeteria manager. He's very animated all of a sudden. This is clearly a touchy subject for him. You look like a bartender. That period of my <laughs> life is over. Not everyone who stands behind a counter is a bartender, okay? I'm the cafeteria manager. Understood. I hope it is. That's all. Let's go. Okay. Not so fast. You owe me 130 real. 17% chance to get away. Holy shit, there's so many things. Badge is missing. Embody. Pissing competition. Get a reality. Who made the call? Oh, there's so many things to do. Uh, and one of them is to slip away. I was going to take off my pants really quick to make it easier to slip away, but but I can't. Um, oh! One moment you're running like the wind. Then you've suddenly turned around and are giving him the finger. Furiously. With both hands. Why? The lady of the wheelchair is right behind me, isn't she? That's true. Yes. And it's worrying. Oh, it is very but worrying. Let's not fixate on it. <sighs> Look at that stupid bartender instead. He has no idea what's going on. You and your fuck you fingers floating <laughs> in the air. Barkeep's got his mouth agape like an idiot. You showed him. Why? Why did I do this? Why did I have to use both my hands to flip him off? Why both? Watch out! Everything goes dark. This is the saddest game I've ever played. Back so soon. Uh, I had an accident. It was no accident. Those were disco moves from your spinal cord. The spinal cord has yet to reveal itself to you. Its mysteries are unholy mysteries. Wow, there's more of you hidden? I'm so cool. Uh... You are way cool. Cooler. Than the bottom of the sea. Too cool for this world. How's it going out there? Are the tiny apes screaming about money yet? Uh. Um. I, I think the tiny apes have started screaming about screaming. Yes. Did one of these tiny apes have a pale green face? What? It's a joke, sweetie. I didn't actually think you saw the kind green ape of Sal Safra in a hostel in Martinez. That would be ridiculous. Are you okay? No. You have sustained a trauma to your lower neck. In addition, you have strained your left trapezius muscle. Pain surges down your back when you move. No, are you okay? The chair took the brunt of it. Don't worry. Are you sure, ma'am? Yes, yes. Check on him. Oh, Lena! Sir, I didn't I didn't mean for this to happen. I'm sorry. This has always been a cop-friendly place. Oh. The drinks are on the house, okay? There were a lot of drinks on the tab. I still have to charge you for three nights and the broken window, though. Uh, that's a hundred square. Thank you for your cooperation. Don't thank me yet. You still owe me a hundred real. If you don't have it by tonight, I just can't let you up there. To your room, okay. And for God's sake, watch out for yourself. Thank you. By the way, where is home? The address is coming up blank, and this place sure isn't it. Do I have one? But you've been at this hostel cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? You had to be somewhere. Far away? In time or space? 
E both. That doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay if you run out of money. Could I trace the way back somehow to the exact street? To the exact number on a building? <laughs> I'll live in a dumpster. I don't care. Fuck everything. Hobo cop. <laughs> Hobo cop. Who is he? You can try. Run some addresses in your head when you get the time. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a street or an apartment will appear. That's exciting. All around you, rain falls on the great city of Rivershaw. Rain drips from the eaves and floods Whoa, the gutters, cool. washing the filth away. Yes. The spring thaw must be here. The snow is melting. What am I doing? Looking up at the sky, cold water dripping from your hair. What do I see? Gray sky like great battleships, clouds colliding with one another. Rain falls down on the world. Wow, how does it feel? Your shirt sticks to your chest. Whoa. The shoulders of your disco blazer grow heavy. The cold finds its way in under your skin. You shiver and the city shivers with you. You're not dressed for this weather. You should get an overcoat or a patrol cloak. What's in the north? Capeside apartments. Tower blocks crowd one another. 4.46 millimeter bullets still lodged in their war-torn stone walls. Hallways collapse from the mortar hits of a war that was lost long ago. Clothes lines go to waste in the rain. Radios play. And closer to here? A yard. Rain falls onto the roof of a woodshed. Coal leaks into a puddle beneath a dead man's feet. He swings from a tree, bloated. Droplets of rain slip from his cold cheeks. I see that. There seems to be a child throwing rocks at him. Delightful. What's to the west? Sheets of rain over the water. A flight of stairs leading into the ocean. Wave after wave washing the coast of Martinez. With its motorboats and gently swaying reeds. The ruins of a half-sunken sea fort crumble on an inlet beyond the Bay of Revachol. Ghosts rise into the sky. What's down the shore? Urban coastline, rain dripping off etonite-covered roofs. Cinder blocks left over from half-finished construction. A defunct research and development building, once seized by revolutionaries. An old wooden church stands on stilts above the water. And beyond that? Coal City, end of all lines. Who are you, ghosts? The skyscrapers of La Delta, the financial district. Faint golden light seeps from the office windows. Will you ever go there? Will I? No, you are just one of the hundreds of thousands who watch them rise across the bay from Martinez every day. I want to go there because you say I can't. Run my fingers through my dampened hair. Your hair is an oily mess flecked with ash from neighboring coal plants. Smoke stacks rise somewhere in the distance. Oh, what's to the east? These are so cool. There's a fleet on the corner. A plastic coat is folded into a small triangle under the counter by the window. Beyond that, the strike breakers have gathered. The great gates of the industrial harbor are locked. A chill runs down your back. You shudder like an animal trying to shake water from its hide. Oh, shake your shoulders again. You shudder, looking <laughs> down at your feet. Dirty rainwater runs veins into the plaza snow. Two green snakeskin shoes stand at attention on the mosaic paving of the plaza. What's below? Collapsed storm drains, old sewage systems flooded with rainwater. Hidden weapon caches from the revolution. Doors leading down to La Royale. The catacombs to which, for three centuries, they delivered the blue-blooded dead. Whoa. What's to the south? A traffic jam. Rain thrumming on the roofs of motor vehicles. Inside, drivers watch water streaming down their windshields. The statue of a king shudders. He too is cold. The canal bridge has been raised. What is on the other side? 
The road ascends. A raised motorway loops above the ghetto. Beneath its concrete columns, a sea of rooftops, woodwork, and tar stretches northward. Four-story buildings as far as the rain can fall. The snows melt in Jamrock. What is Jamrock? Revachol is the capital of the world. Jamrock is the capital of Revachol. Droplets form on your eyelashes. It's pretty rad, 20 Uno. It's home. Oh. <laughs> where the hood, where the hood, where the hood at? That's a reference that I wasn't expecting. Ooh, and look further. Why am I not there? To be in Martinez, where no one goes, at the runoff point of a long forgotten canal, in the whitest part of town, in the shadow of the day the revolution failed. What am I doing here? Standing in the rain, looking north, where Jamrock Rock City stretches inland. Look further. In the rain-swept distance, above the rooftops of Jamrock, a repurposed silk mill stands perched above the motorway exit. Precinct 41 punches <laughs> in the rain. Satellite officer Jean Vichmer rushes down the precinct stairs, umbrella in hand. It's unopened. He doesn't seem pleased about the spring rain. On the bridge, officers Torsen and McLean are standing guard. Torsen wears jeans and a fishnet wife beater. Satellite officer Vikmir passes by, and the young man remarks to him. What is your remark? Where's your homo, homie? <laughs> hey, right here! What? It's not like that. They're what is called heterosexual life partners. They have a battle-tested relationship. A, a blood bond, if you will. Huh? Yeah. He opens his umbrella, but the wind immediately turns it inside out. Hetero. Sexual. Life. Partners. Funny apery. Male-centric workplace humor. Have you seen him? <laughs> Is there something wrong? No, nothing. It's just... Judy went to his place and found the Monday mail and opened. I think he's still there. You didn't like. Drink with him over the weekend, did you? That would be irresponsible. With that animal? Never again, man. What, is he still down there? In, you know... South of the Interchange? The... What was it? In Martinez. He's in Martinez. Your vision blurs. You wipe your face with your hand. The rain stings your eyes, making you look up and blink. What's above? Coalition hero statics hang like apparitions under the cloud cover. Way up there, where rain forms, rotors flutter silently. Your sight clears. And we end with a swears. This rain will not let up anytime soon. You should get a raincoat. There's a freight to the east. They sell them there. Okay. Keep the snow in the wheelbarrow. Fuck the police. What do you say? Pigs go home. Okay. People don't seem to like us very much. I want to get a coat, but I also want to talk to that horrific child. Check my menus. This one. <laughs> Temporary research uh, bonus. One encyclopedia factual memory research time. Let's rewind. Retrace our drunken steps. Fall. Get up. Uh, get off the asphalt in 20 minutes. Shuffle to your feet through the courtyard. Scaring little children. Go under the grazed, raised motor track. The 881 till you reach La Domaine Eminente in North Jamrock. The streets are frozen uh, this time of year. Caked with ice. Walk down Main to Perdition. There's a side alley, and there are your footprints in the mud. So, six hours. We'll get a solution, I guess. Cool. Yes, I need money. I got 
Ooh, a, my green ape pen. Girl loves green ape pen. We don't have enough money for a coat, so I'm gonna go yell at this kid. Oh, garbage. There are bottles inside. You could pick them up if you had a bag. Ghislaine. Learn ideas through the game and equip them. They take a while to internalize, but they give you passive bonuses and sometimes debuffs. What is what is all this? Books? This book has a rose, a pistol, and a half-naked dame on its cover. The book appears to be erotica, but without actual erotica. <laughs> Very muscular man surrounded by flames. This book is about pate. This book, you really don't understand what it's about, nor does it seem important. It takes willpower to not even or to even read the author's name. Jan Kaus from Iguana. A book about biodario culture. It promotes freedom uh, and roaming upstream. A book about the future. The government reads your mind and uses radio technology. Hello, child. Did you kill him? Did you kill Hello, him? Hello, sir. Step right in. The store is open. <laughs> Hello. I am the law. Hi. Hi. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? Uh, what kind of store is this? It's a bookstore, sir. We sell books, postcards, and some board games. It's called Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. Happy New Year, Charm Z! Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horses, little girl. What is a... <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. I know all these things. What's a board game? Board games are like little games on a table, made to pass the time. There are several different ones, but sailors here mostly buy cards. Uh, what is a book? That is a book. They have stories inside them. It's like someone told you a story in a really long letter. She is unfazed by your questions. She would consider it impolite to point out any perceived weirdness. Good, what's a postcard? A postcard is a small cardboard picture. You can write a few words on the other side and send it to your friend or beloved. Interesting, My thanks. My pleasure. Anything else you'd like to know? Uh, is it okay if I ask you some questions? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. Who are these famous people? Oh, kings and queens and generals of old, or artists and writers, or musicians, those kinds of people. There's usually something extraordinary about them. She scratches her cold, reddened cheek and continues. I think that's why people read them, to find the secrets of their fame. Seems like most people who read those books fail to get more famous from reading them. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to I'm not going to break her her heart. I have different questions. Mm -hmm. What is this crime business? I'm not going to ask the child what romance is. Okay, bye. Time to go kick this kid's ass up here. The less good child. She's really good at explaining. I didn't feel judged at all until the voice inside my head was like, uh, you should feel judged. The letter R wears a crown. On the ribbon below, a light above descending. Kuno's got this! The boy throwing rocks at the dead body can, can't be older than 12. Oh, yeah! Not a comfy, Kuno! Oh, there's two? Where's the other child? Oh, there's the child! Behind the thing! Okay. Hey, kid. A word. Police business. No, people don't like police here, so we're going to play it safe. We're going to be a moment of your time, please. Can't talk, pig. Shit's coming up strong. Throwing rocks. Shit coming up strong. That sounds good. Joyous. You should hang out with this kid and see what that juicy shit is all about. Juicy what now? I mean drugs. The kid's on drugs. Oh! <laughs> oh! Yeah, Kuno! Ride the lightning, Kuno! Kuno's riding at sea. He wipes sweat from his brow and sends another rock flying. The rake, Kuno! You should throw the rake at him, Kuno! Yeah, get him, boys! The fuck does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno's not a gardener. 
Hey kid, you wanna hang out? I'm not a narc. Uh, Kim, what should we do? We shouldn't do anything. I don't tempt such forces. What forces? You will see. What do you mean? I have questions for you. All right, entertain the Kuno. Show me what you got. What you got there? What you got, huh? Show me what you got. Uh, who's Kuno? Kuno's Kuno Pig. Oh. The boy points to his chest with both thumbs. Kuno. Primal. Violent. Uh, got it. Uh, I have another question. So you're referring to yourself in the third person. That's interesting. The fuck are you calling a third person? Kuno's the fucking first person? <laughs> oh. He looks slightly confused, but proud he came up with that retort. Like, honestly, really good for you. But right as he's getting distracted, you hear a malevolent hiss from behind the fence. Watch out, Kuno! He's trying to fiddle you! He's going to put his hands on you! The thing behind the fence starts squealing <laughs> shrill and violent like a fire alarm. Help! The sound gets louder as the child shouts at the window overlooking the yard. Help! He's got the Kuno help! <laughs> Just answer the questions. Help! He's digging his dick out! <laughs> no, I'm not! Escalate, Kuno! His dick is out! You're afraid! This is- what is happening? Pigs in there and Kuno! Somebody, please! Shut him down! Shut him down! Don't punch him, it's a bad idea. It's a bad idea. Oh my god! What is this sh sick charade? No! <laughs> Get up, Kuno, you sick fat fuck! Are you high right now? Help! Misters, help! He prances around, eyes bulging out of their sockets, rolling hard, yelling at windows. Rolling super hard. He's having the time of his life. Total ecstasy. Fuck the pig. He's flashing Kuno. He's showing his genitals. If you don't help Kuno now, it'll be too late. I'm not gonna punch him. It's a bad idea to punch a child. Do it? No. I don't want to shut the... Oh, God. If Clay were here, Clay would... Clay would punch the hell out of this kid. If it was kicking the kid, maybe. No, we're not gonna punch him. We're not yep. gonna punch Kuno whispers at your your retreat. I know you wanted to hit me. You got that I'm gonna fuck that Kuno up look that Kuno's dad gets. The murder look. The rage look. <laughs> How do you know that? You can't see inside my head. Can you read my mind, Kuno? Yes, but I didn't act on it. It was just a fantasy. I know what you thought. I'm gonna fuck that Kuno up. I'm gonna shut that shit down. You know what? You should have. Because now. Oh no. You're nothing. You're a joke to Kuno. Kuno laughs at you. King Kuno! The whole charade was about establishing dominance over you. You backing up means he's succeeded. I don't like this tiny. Kuno turned you into his prison, bitch. You're gonna be in this shit with Kuno. No, you're not. We can just leave. Yeah, we can, Kim. Bitch, you're gonna be in this shit with Kuno forever! The pipo headed creature doesn't let him finish. Leave. Useless. I want to talk to this tree. The ladder's still rickety, but still climbable. The ladder's for kids. It wouldn't hold the weight of a grown man. Someone's trying to grow herbs in the greenhouse. Herbs in the greenhouse. The winch mechanism has been oxidizing for some years. Ooh, there's so much to look at. What is that? Magnesium. There are several footprints in the mud left by work boots anywhere from six to twelve pairs have walked here oof let's try what do you think you are 
a super detective, you're hungover. These are just dents in the mud. No pattern emerges for the time being. Heavy workers' boots with reinforced toes and hobnails all over the yard. Isn't this something an industrial worker would wear? Lieutenant Worker's Boot Tracks. Noted. Takes out his notebook. This trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a padlock that says, whirling in rags. There's something in there, not necessarily connected to the case, but still. <laughs> Why am I looking at you, trash container? You're just a trash container. The body is downwind from here. Maybe you prefer the smell of garbage to the smell of death. Lieutenant, what do you think could be in there? Trash, food waste from the cafeteria. They lock these containers to keep the derelicts from flocking in. Yeah, but I... The evidence, too. I feel like there's something in there. What do you mean, feel? It's just a hunch. Maybe through someone threw something in there? Mm-hmm. How do we get the lock open? We could try using a pry bar. There's one in my motor carriage, or... Or... Or we could ask for a key from the manager of the whirling in rags. He probably has one. He probably does has one. Run! Run as fast as you can! Ooh, hello! You in this shit with the Kuno now. <laughs> Roundhouse crap Volcano style. Kuno! Thank you, Kuno! The Kuno. Can I help you? Is the trash container out back yours? Mine? No, it belongs to the whirling in rags. Thank you for clearing that up. Why do you keep the container locked? Why? To keep the hobos and drunks out. That's why. And the neighbors too. They put their trash there and they don't pay for the garbage company. I thought as much. And are you the only party with access to the trash container? Well, yes. Us and the garbage disposal company. It seems a little callous, doesn't it? Something stirs in you. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Nothing stirs in me and I isn't callous. It's common sense. I wonder what this feeling is. Prod at him and find out. Uh, we need those keys. What do you need them for? It concerns the case. Please cooperate. Just bring them back once you're done, please. Ooh. Oh, by the way, I'm going to sing karaoke here. Absolutely out of the question. Absolutely in the question. Yeah. First, we find a sad banger. Yeah. Then we sing this place to shit. Yeah. It's just a matter of time. We'll have to make sure to lock it up so Kuno doesn't live in there. I could live in there. Oh, I live here. This is my house. This trash container is locked with a well-oiled crack. The lock pops open. It should now be possible to simply raise the lid. Don't. Maybe you shouldn't. Open the lid. The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. Stinky. Whoa! Fook does Kuno care. <laughs> Ludwig! Kuno doesn't give a fuck! We're just in time. This hasn't been emptied for over a week. Look under the boxes of carton. You see milk and egg rest with one broken egg in it. Some pasta wrapper. Picking up the soggy packages somehow feels familiar. A box falls into pieces in your hands. Batiste Sole cereal. There are plastic pasta packages below, and turbo noodles. Nothing of note, however. Pick at the rags. Among the threadbare kitchen towels, something catches your eye. A pair of denim trousers. Grab them. As the legs of the slime-covered jeans begin to unspool from the garbage, a rank corpse smell fills the air. The victim's clothes? <laughs> Cadaverino door is faint. If these belong to the deceased, they were removed when he was still in the early stages of decay. Gross. Drop them in here, officer. Bag the trousers. These are marked blue jeans. Pockets. Empty. Or emptied. He wore them with a belt, too. A white belt. 
The loops appear stretched, but the belt is missing. That's it. Do you see anything else in there? I have another bag here. Something slimy catches your eye. Reach for the slimy! A drab, long-sleeved shirt, olive-colored, appears from the food waste, dripping with pus. Gross! This is a military-type overgarment. No label or serial number. This is the kind of ribnit shirt that's worn over light armor to conceal it in an urban scenario. Anything more? Kim is really good at this. The rest of the rags are just kitchen variety waste. A yellow old mug that catches your eye. But other than that... A thrown out towel in a mug. All right. We should go to Gart again and ask if he knows who put the clothes in the trash. It could be as simple as someone from the hostel cleaning the yard. Or that one. I'd advise against confronting that force. Yeah, me too. You think someone from the whirling... From from the whirling might have been involved? Not really. Oh. All we know is the victim's clothes are in the trash. The lid was locked and his establishment had the key. It's just a small loose thread. The lieutenant nods, then looks back into the trash container. Search the food waste. It's just organic waste. Okay. Cold and slimy on your hands. Ah. Apple and potato pills mostly. Okay. You I'm can make soup. Fight sludge. And Gross. the occasional chicken bone thrown in for good measure. But hey, nothing. It's nothing. Nothing more to see here. What's this? The trash container? What? A blue piece of plastic sticks out from the apple peels. It's shiny. Looks like the corner of something. Oh, pick it out. Something larger. A clipboard. A blue plastic clipboard with moist papers hanging from it. They look badly damaged, but you can still make out forms and notes written in a man's handwriting. I don't know how you can tell that, but that's fine. Officer, is that your paperwork? I don't know what this is. It is. Look, the plastic has the RCM street grid on it. You've even got an oh, autopsy form in there. A miserable looking slip of paper sticks to the board. If you don't mind me asking, how did this get in the trash? It has a foreboding quality to it. Maybe I needed to lose it for the great bloodletting to begin. Uh, I think I didn't want to be a cop anymore, so I threw it away. Well. He doesn't know what to say. His eyes express a rare condolence. Then he picks it up. Lucky we found it. You should take stock of what remains. Just to be sure some has not made it into the hands of the RCM's adversaries. Organized crime and the like. Okay. There might have been police secrets in your notes. Okay. It would also not hurt to start taking notes on the case. Okay. Now, tell me what your eagle eyes see. Or are we finished? Some items, such as the ledger you found, are interactable. Go to your inventory and select the Interact tab to read your paperwork. Interactivity. Where are you? Inventory. Oh, I'm in a conversation. I can't. I'm getting the mug. You pick out a broken mug with an oddly racist depiction of the yellow man frolicking in saffron. I don't want the mug. I'm sorry. I I don't want to take the mug anymore. Only in its social sensibility. I, can I not take the mug? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. You've acquired an interactable item. Investigate this item further. The container sounds a muffled gong. That's one thing off the list. I think we got it all. This is the ledger that you found in the trash. It's full of notes written in a man's dense cursive. Have a closer look. Maybe it can be salvaged. How? How do I have a closer look? Interact. Interact. It's the ledger you found in <laughs> the trash. Is. A pitiful cabbage of white and yellow papers hanging from plastic board, barely held together by a metal clip. This sad display is made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Anything else? There's a piece of toilet paper, or is it cleaning tissue? No, it's toilet paper. Great. Desperately sticking to the back Grand. of the blue plastic clipboard. It's a metaphor for you perfect below the pathetics terror do not look into its blue heart 
uh, inspect the clip. An aluminium block runs the width of the board, biting down on the paperwork. Its crocodile teeth are the only thing keeping the papers together. Run the your fingers pencil, across the tip worn down to nothing has been attached to the clip. The surface is interrupted by a silvery sticker. It's rectangular, Ooh. sparkling with iridescence. You don't know how you didn't notice it before. Well, Lieutenant, is this one of those hologram watermarks you mentioned earlier? What? He's yes, lost in his uh, notes. Allogen watermark used for adding information to RCM property. Interesting. What kind of information? It depends. Aside from an anti-counterfeiting stamp, mine has my station number and address. The information varies by date of issue. <gasps> Ooh. How many years you've been on the force, he's thinking. It'll have that. How can I read it? Any capable light with the right wavelength will do. Like, for example... All RCM vehicles have headlights designed to reveal halogen watermarks. Mine too. Cool! This means you can read the watermarks if you just turn the lights on. That's all, thank you. Okay. While a bunch of sodden papers sag from the clipboard... The white hand, papers! They're not exactly white. <laughs> they're yellowed in patches by sunlight and alcohol and covered in dense blue handwriting. Ink escapes into watercolor patterns, reaching its tendrils across entire pages. The paper itself is checkered with faint red lines, forming short paragraphs. Once in a while, there's a red stamp that exclaims, case files commit to paper. The case files themselves are plenty. You count more than a hundred sodden, crumpled up, earmarked pages falling apart in your hands. They appear to be sufficiently organized and extremely dense, if mostly illegible. What is in there? What are they about? Work, strife, poverty, the Jamrock Quarter. These are handwritten logs of investigations dating back to January 51 mm. this year. The exact number is hard to estimate due to missing pages and an odd naming convention. But there are at least 20, maybe 30 cases undertaken not completed, mind you. It's the middle of March. You have attempted two cases a week on average. Is two cases a week a good caseload, Lieutenant? Huh? Two complex cases to undertake is a lot, yes. You really have to push yourself. I would not suggest it, lest you start making mistakes. Hmm, two cases a week appears to have been my load, Lieutenant. I'm not sure I completed them, though. Two? That's a lot. I didn't mean to say you are making mistakes, by the way. That was presumptuous of me. Oh. I'm sure I made plenty of mistakes. It's okay. We all make mistakes. Oh, we do. God knows I've made my share. He tries not to think of them. Like a fan of girls, the checkered papers dry in your hand. The handwriting is extremely dense if mostly illegible. There is mention of a naming convention here. Yes, it appears you employ a, shall we say, robust yet literary system. Each investigation has its case number written on the margins. Yet, still more tellingly, most are accompanied by a name. Oh my, and they're written in capital letters too. Yes, all caps. One is called the Next World Mural. Another, the Square Bullet Hole Murders. Another yet, the unsolvable case. More? Others appear more lighthearted. The guys on a couch in an unexpected location <laughs> and the murder at the Ukar parlor. Even the rare article free collapsing tenement. Murder features prominently throughout. You like this grimy murdering, don't you? It's going to take an effort to piece these case files together, but it can be done. Once you're done inspecting them, up close. Kim, my cases appear to employ some kind of naming convention. You mean the alphanumeric? Officer, precinct, time of arrival at the scene? No, I mean a non-numeric one, with titles. Oh, you mean the titular? Yes, well, so do I. In our defense, almost everyone in the RCM does. Why is that? It's a holdover from the early days of the RCM, right after the revolution, when the organization had little idea how to do things. It persists in an unofficial capacity. Officers use these titles to refer to their work among themselves. I seem to have a case named the Square Bullet Hole Murders. Again, in your defense, I seem to have named one the man with the hole in his head. 
That was a real person. His death was real. Still, I named it that to amuse myself. Yeah, we've been there. <laughs> I pray his loved ones never find out. Oh, what happened to him? Rail spiked through the head. Oh! He died. It was a workplace accident. Uh, count the pages. There is, for precisely one more. Fifteen pages near the end remain untouched by the damage. The checkered grid forms a structure of passages, breaking the case into subtasks to accomplish. Commit to paper using the pen Lena gave you. The tasks you've completed flow out of the kind green ape pen in a brash freehand similar to the rest of the letters. The wording comes easily. It's almost robotically simple. Mm. A language developed for mental rigor and simplicity. Yeah, my English teacher gave everyone offensive names to remember uh, people in his classroom. Inspect the victim's body. Interview the cafeteria manager. Cross out the ones you've already finished. A satisfying slash sounds across the paper. You're done, it seems to say. And you, and you. Things to be done and things already done. The composition of reality. This is an extremely useful tool for a detective of the citizen's militia. Now all that remains is to name the case. Like ugly sweater. <laughs> like, like, okay, ugly sweater's name is Chelsea kind of thing, you know? And it's like ugly sweater, Chelsea. I was probably <laughs> gay acne boy. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant, have you by any chance named our case? No, actually. Any ideas? Uh, the hanged man. The furies are at home in the mirror. The setting sun. Shit on a stick. The furies are at home in the mirror. Furies. Yes, well, I don't know. I have to be honest. I'm not experiencing the internal strife that it refers to. And also, his furrow brows. Could you make it less poetic somehow? Just a normal case name, you know? Think, what would that be? A good normal name. The Hanged Man. Great. That's great. That's actually what I was thinking. Oh my too. God, we're becoming the friends. Hanged Man. Good, strong name. We have a very good name for the case now. I'm going to start calling it the Hanged Man. It's good we sorted this out. When done inspecting these. You don't exactly close them so much as distance yourself from the smelly papers they're a little further from your nose now uh browse the yellow papers in the back you see thin translucent copy of paper some neon yellow some bright red all covered in boxes like marching armies these look like official forms waiting to be filled out yeah i also uh was trying to not read them as furries then rip them from the binder and hand them out according to type of form what type of forms are there three the topmost are misconduct fines the middle ones are station calls and the bottommost are field autopsy forms each is easy enough to make sense of misconduct fine a monetary penalization ranging from 20 to 250 real severe cases allow for 1000 real but that requires special paperwork the details of issuing these fines are spread out over the rest of the field. Can we misconduct fine uh, Kuno for 100 gold? These are quite sinister in turn. They give a date and time for the person to appear at the specified precinct police station. Below the call are the criminal charges you risk by not appearing. A dozen pages of thin copy paper, bright red in color. You see the parameters of a deceased human form waiting to be filled in. Age, sex, condition of internal organs, color of the irises, predation marks, condition of sexual organs. Well, enough of these. Yes, all that remains now is to fill those forms and hand them to people. Fines for wrongdoers, interview requests for bad guys, and field autopsies to dead guys. The rest of the stinking cellulose is much worse for wear. Being sandwiched between the board and the rest of the paperwork. Let's do a roll, baby. The fragile copy. It's proving to Damn be harder it. than expected. You just don't have the intellectual rigor to patch the quilt back together. Try again later. Uh, look at the clipboard. It's made of dark blue plastic, hard enough to beat someone to submission with. Okay. The edges are rounded, however. 
The U4 sized board feels thick and heavy in your hand. Light shimmers on its wet surface. On the back, you see the embossed letters RCM. What did you say the color was? Blue. The blue heart. Don't look into it. I want to look into it. Something rattles inside ever so lightly. Is there a hidden compartment? The plastic shimmers like lapis lazuli, but it is not see-through. You cannot see to its center. How would I open it? With your hands, you four-sized pages hang from the clip, screwed to the top of the board. Open the hidden compartment! Mm. The ah! two sides of the board appear slightly misaligned, like a drawer that's come off its slides. If you bend the plastic on your knee, slowly, the slides snap back into place. It should be possible to just, you know. Slide the drawer open. Without resistance or sound, the two panels move against each other. The compartment is now open. What's inside? Two ticket stubs and a handmade postcard. Pick up. Whoa, Jesus Christ! Pick up the ticket stubs. Two octopuses are smiling, reaching their tentacles toward each other in the colored pencil drawings. The tickets permit access to the zoo in Revachol East. The aquarium costs extra. These let you go there, too. Pick up the card. Thin wax paper has been glued to a piece of cardboard. Sounds like leaves rustling when you pick it up. You see violet flowers, floral patterns, patches of glue. Smell it first. It smells of chewing gum. Apricot flavored. Ah, oh, continue. A touch of cinnamon, the end of summer. You think the label says Tutti Frutti. Open it. Familiar handwriting lines the inside of the card. Looped, round letters in Good a night, woman's Sandra. hand. A young woman in her twenties. There is care, effort, and a smile, you think. Although that is not something you can read from someone's handwriting. Okay. Harry, it begins. You're already reading. I wanted to write you a letter so you can read it when you wake up. Maybe it will make you happy. Throw it away, please. No, keep reading, it'll make me happy. A merciful wind blows in from the Bay of Revachol, dusting the ground at your feet and raising newspapers far away. You feel the card slipping into it. Let's go. Hold on to the card, read the card. Your hands shake, holding onto it. Every morning when I step out and you're asleep behind me, it says, I find a little piece of sadness in me. I carry it in my chest, down Voyager Road. Every step I take, it grows. By the time I reach the fuel station, it has filled me entirely. I step onto the light rail and look back. Sparks fall from the bow collector. I know it will be like this until late afternoon, when I get off the 42 and walk to you keep reading you you every step i take will get lighter it almost makes me run sometimes i do i can't believe i met you i can't believe the happiness i feel with you it seems unhealthy you have a vast vast soul and i will always 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 come back to it kisses 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 you feel the air sucked out of your lungs and the blood sucked out of your head Everything around you gets dark. Small white dots appear. You feel the ledger slip from your hand. No, no, hold on. Hold on! To what? There's nothing. Catch me, Kim! Kim, catch me! Detective, is everything all right? Catch me! Sad brother, no treachery, just blackout. Just lie there, passed out. Well, 
almost nothing. There is the ground below you, that's still there. And the small light that's on, fluttering somewhere in the basal ganglia. Who's that? That's me, blue eyes, that's me. Uh, who's that? Who is what? What? He speaks of the sickening longing, the unwell emotion. Even in the darkness, he's grasping for it. Still trying to hold on to the great sorrows slipping in the water. No. Slimy. No, I was cool. I'm cool. The cool when you're dead, brother. Here in the paleomammalian cortex, we call it the shadow. Because it's always there. Where is Voyager Road? There is no Voyager Road. There are no roads, no houses, no lights in the windows. It's all on. Pause. Was that the X something? Bloated corpse of the past resurfacing. No, it's beautiful! Beautiful. Believe me, stupid ape. Its lack of beauty was not the problem. Uh, enough. And just lie there, motionless. You think they would let you? Until you disintegrate into biomolecules. No. Someone is breathing on your face now, inspecting your pupils, stupid idiot. What is that? It's cold. Yes. They're pouring something on you. It's in you. And it... It's delicious. Glowing lights on a dashboard emerge out of nothingness. Where am I? The upholstered cabin of Lieutenant Kitsuragi's motor carriage, seated in the driver's basket. The air is thick with leatherworks and heavy fuel oil. Cold water runs down your chin. Drink. Water. I will drink. I will listen to everything you say, Kim. The water is cold, silvery. The stuff of life itself as it pours down your parched throat. The pounding in your head recedes. The darkness parts. Drink. You haven't drunk water in two days. Yikes! Did you know the human body is not made to survive on alcohol alone? You need a secondary form of hydration. With greedy gulps, you down Yum. half a liter of cold water. Some of it spills on the driver's seat. The lieutenant pays no heed to it. What happened? I came into contact with the burnt-out ruins of the past, Lieutenant. That does sometimes happen. He hands you the remaining uh, remains of your ledger. You dropped these. Are you okay to proceed? Let's solve this case. Good. The ledger of failure and hatred is a special item that can be used both as an interactable and a tool equipped in your held slot for skill bonuses. Find it under the Tools tab in your inventory. The Ledger of Failure and Hatred. Holy shit. I'm so low on authority. I will not be very intimidating. I need new clothes. What else? What else have I learned? Oh, this one. White morning. Temporary research bonus. Negative one authority. Little guy gets further and further away. You see yourself from above. You're passed out on the blue tiles of the hostel room floor. Even from this distance, you can see your eyes flutter at the mention of what? A great white object letting out its sweet smell like a lily of the valley. The little man's forgotten in na its name, but he still remembers the feeling. And look, he moves. The feeling animates him. He instinctively reaches out for the feeling's best friend, a bottle of Commodore Red. He puts on his disco clothes and gets smaller and smaller. Internalize! Ooh. I got points. I got a point to put somewhere. Empathy. Uh, 
Understand cop culture. Ooh, charming. Maybe I'll be charming. Yes, charming. Oh, you can revert things. That's super nice. Before you stands a motor carriage. The bodywork is covered in blue and white livery, bearing the number 57. Vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It hasn't had time to cool off yet. This must be the infernal machine that tore you from oblivion. Leave. I gotta still look at that body. There's so many people to talk to. It's 11.30 on day one. Let's investigate the body. I got my clipboard. Got my clipboard. Let's talk to this terrifying creature over here. Kuno, the pig's getting pretty close to me. Come to snuff my shit out, I think. Let's take one step closer. Looks like it's time for me to go, Kuno. Pig's come to take me in. She means it. The fear is real. I just want to ask you some questions. I'm going away for a long, long time, Kuno. Going away for life. No, you're fine, Kuno S. Oh, they're both called Kuno. What's going on there? Fuck are you trying to pull, pig? <laughs> Child, converse with me. Murder was the case. Was the case they gave me. She has almost vanished behind the fence. Only the top of her head remains. Top of her hat. Okay, time to look at the body. The corpse looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips are fish-like and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. You seem to be holding your breath. Look down. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. Ooh. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell seeps in even through your clenched nostrils. God, what is that? Why is it so bad? Active decay. It's okay to throw up with his arm. No one is judging. He's about to blow! Cock's gonna blow, Kuno! I hope I don't because I don't want to look foolish in front of these horrible children. 17% chance to not look foolish! The smell is repulsive. Foolish! It pushes in from your mouth. More instant and more familiar than anything you'd expected. More fever than odor. It fills your mind, flushing you from within. Let it out. Gross. Oh, not done. Are we done? Feeling good? Gross. Disgusting. You feel a great force ringing from your stomach. He curls and pushes it out, burst by burst, until a pool of vomit lies under your feet and your throat stings from the stomach acid. I'm sorry, Kim. It's okay. Happens to everyone. Keep it. Oh, thanks. The hangover is clearly making this worse for you. You could use some ammonia to clear your head. Oh, you think ammonia would help? If you can handle the headache. Some officers use it to deal with cadaverine odor. Okay, but where do we get ammonia from? There is Fritz nearby, east of the hostel. They usually have a small apothecary. If they don't... Ooh, greenhouse. There's a greenhouse here, and a gardener with a wheelbarrow on the corner of the whirling in rags. If she works here, she might have something for the smell. Acquiring ammonia will provide a modifier to the white check. Modifiers make checks easier and allow you to retry them. Oh. Okay. An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material eat tonight. What is this? It's nothing. Someone just left some roofing material slanted against an old shack. Uh, let me look at some things back here. Okay, that's a long way around. Can I just walk here normal? Normal-like? Well, let's try it. 
Let's an perception. Pile because it's nice and orderly. Well laid pallets. Eased. No. There's more to this. You get this strange feeling. What feeling? Hard to say. It's gone now. Feelings pass, you see. Especially the small ones. We're going. Perception changes your draw distance. That's cool too. Oh, what's this? An old call box with a matrix of push buttons lists all the companies in the East Delta Commerce Center. Oh, wow. What do you have to say? Who are you? The RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? I have some questions. Of course. What can I help you with? Uh, my partner told you me you may have some ammonia. May I have some, please? Sure. I'm done with it. Go easy on that stuff. It gave me a terrible headache. I have to run. Of course. I won't hold you back. Her gloves. You get the feeling that you need them. You have a dead body to deal with after all. Uh, may I borrow your gloves? Sure, keep them. I have another pair. Oh, thank you. Gardener, best friend. Love Gardener. Ampule of ammonia. Ampule of ammonia. Inspect. Pay for damages. Read the watermarks. First, go to Kinema and turn on the lights. I guess since we're at the car, let's do it. Let's turn on the lights. Let's learn about ourselves. We got so much to learn. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Kim, how do I turn on the headlights? All right, ready? I turn. You press start. It's next to the preheater. He's downplaying his excitement. The lieutenant is more than happy to show off his precious Oh, carriage. he likes the cars. The dashboard lights up with orange glow. The roundsman gauge jumps, and the engine of the caprice Kinema comes to life with a whiny growl. The lights unfold with a little click, casting electrical light onto the ground before the vehicle. There you go. I'll turn them off from the remote once you're done. As you hold your ledger's clip under the headlamp, an iridescent hologram appears. A street grid and the veins of a great river. A familiar sensation washes He's over. He's a nerd. I love it. There she is. Revachol West. There's a note of pride in the lieutenant's voice. Around the borders of the watermark are dozens, no, hundreds of micro perforations. Look at the shimmering street grid. The rectangular watermark is overlaid with the logo of the RCM, and yet the major arteries of Revachol are all recognizable. They shimmer in the Kanema's headlights. Wait and look around. A rat brazenly darts past you and disappears amongst the stop lorries. In the distance, a child somewhere shrieks a woman reprimands her in a voice no quieter than the child's cry. In the middle of a broken plaza, in a cone of light, barely visible in the daytime, two men, one slim, the other sturdy. They are on the city stage, but only one of them knows his lines. Whoa, that's cool. Ah, Martinez. Where are we on this? Let me see. It couldn't be the two men that Shivers was talking about. Right here. He says, his finger near the top of the map on a segment of coast jutting out into the great ocean. Seems nice. No, it does not. Oh, the lieutenant says without optimism. Look at the perforations. There are many of them, and they are divided into three separate rows. Tally up the different rows. The first row has 18 dots. What about the next one? The next is the longest. It runs all the way around the border, and then some. Count them individually. There are so many 
It's hard to count. More than 150. Okay. At least. What about the Maybe last row? The last row has three perforations. Three? That's it? That's it. Hey, Kim, what do all these holes mean? Those are perforations. They represent your record as an officer of the RCM. They are your statistics, as it were. I should have guessed you'd keep a record. Officers often do. Let's take a look. Okay. Son, here is where we score your life performance. You better hope it's good. I hope it's good. The first row represents your years of service. 18 years. Okay, not bad at all. What did you do before you volunteered? I walked the land telling whores and liars to the of the end to come. There are 9,855 days remaining. Probably some boring office job. I feel like I just went around apologizing all the time. Uh, Maybe you were a diplomat or in PR. Doesn't matter, I suppose. Let's move on, shall we? This next row, the one that wraps all the way around, is your number of closed cases. Closed is good. It means finished. You've got, let's see, wow, more than 200. Is that a lot? It's quite a lot. Even for someone who's been on the force for nearly two decades. Ooh. Usually, clearing more than 10 cases a year puts you in the 90th percentile of all RCM officers. So are you saying I used to be a super cop? Call it what you want. You were a valuable member of your precinct. Now, let's look at the last row. Right. Those are your confirmed kills. Whoa. You've got precisely three perforations there. Confirm kills. That sounds pretty evil. A drink would soften that feeling. <laughs> so I'm a killer. That's right. A killer of humans. For an RCM officer, especially Precinct 41, which is in the Jamra Quarter, it's rather um, tame. I mean that in a good way. Oh, thank you. There are certain officers who treat their kills like some kind of ghoulish game. If they do happen to solve a case, it's usually by accident. It's obvious the lieutenant doesn't think very highly of these officers. But it seems as though you are, or at least were, one of the good ones. So we have that to be thankful for. What did we uncover that made us want to forget? He's sincerely glad you're not a scary predator. Not to say relieved you're competent. Have you ever killed anyone, Kim? Yes. He says, declining to elaborate. It's not a problem for him to state it, however. How did you handle the strain? Everyone has their own method of coping. Some more effective or self-destructive than others. Right? I, I, I'm glad that I'm not a total idiot <laughs> all the time. Uh, he gives you a meaningful look. Personally, I find it helps to keep up a few hobbies. Ooh, like what? Oh, this and that. Let's not get into it now. Maybe I should find a hobby. Why not gardening? You've already got the gloves. I do have the gloves! It's meant in earnest. Please don't mistake it for a jab. Thanks for this. The lieutenant nods. Okay, right. let's go. I'll go turn off the lights. You can now see your statistics on your journal page. To the right of the task description. Ooh! Superstar cop, apocalypse cop, sorry cop, boring cop, communist, fascist, ultra liberal, moralist, good cop, bad cop, honor, people killed, case solved, years in service. <gasps> Neat! Ooh! This is cool! Okay, let's l interact with this that I don't super love, but we're gonna do it. This broken-eared mug somehow made its way into the whirling rags, uh, whirling in rags dumpster. It depicts a person of Samaran descent, frolic in a field of saffron flowers. Oh, a very horrible stereotype. It seems to be a cheap knockoff of some colonial era antique. It's just a racist mug. What's there to read here? Not much. I don't want Kim to think I'm racist, so I don't really care for this mug. I just want to get rid of it. <laughs> like, get get rid of it. Look at all that content. Can I throw it away? Where's the garbage? Well, 
I guess I have that mug on me forever now. Look at the racist mug! I don't wanna, it's so fine. It's just a racist, oh boy. Here we go. What are you going to say about a broken, tossed away mug that you dug out of the garbage? Um. <laughs> this mug is an example of prejudice. I'm going to use it as an example of what not to do. But it was in the trash. Why not just call it out when you see it? Or do some volunteering work? Just finish your case, detective. Thank you. Okay, let's go, let's go. Let's go look at a dead body. You wanna see a dead body? There he still is, looking right through you. Oh, I have a plus one eyes. because of ammonia. The body below is entirely dedicated. Well, here we go. To that corpse the ammonia only makes it worse the combination forces tears out of your ducts should have got the painkiller it in once the second time not, not so much. much when the vomiting is done your cheeks are wet with tears <laughs> i don't think i want to be a cop anymore get a hold of yourself <laughs> You feel the lieutenant pat your back rhythmically. The weight is reassuring, like a crenel on solid fortification. Pat, pat, pat. I've seen strong men turn themselves inside out for hours. You are facing tough odds here. Alcohol withdrawal makes it considerably harder. <sighs> Why can't I keep it in if I've been a cop my whole life? I've seen captains puke their guts out. It never gets easier. You never get used to the smell. Every Monday is cadaver day. Throw up, investigate. Throw up, initial autopsy. Throw up, baguette. Oh, I thought he said baguette, but baguette. He pats your back again. Then drive to the station. Maybe throw up on the way there if you didn't bag the thing tight enough. You seem to be fine. I think I've lost my sense of smell. There is a pause. Not being hungover helps too. Seriously, this isn't fun. I don't want to be a policeman anymore. Okay, you've said it. You needed to say it. And now that you have... He withdraws uh, his hand from your back and looks you in the eye. You need to get your shit together. <laughs> but I don't want to get my shit together. <sighs> okay. We should go talk to the locals. Find something else to do while the wind changes. It's pretty bad right now. You've gained a thought. When this dialogue is over, go to your thought cabinet and internalize it for special bonuses and effects. Give it half an hour. Get yourself together. Then come back and have another go. Thanks, Kim. Kim is so nice. Volumetric shit compressor. Your shit is up. Part and it's rather unbecoming of a cop and a human being. It's supposed to be the opposite of that. Together! Compressed in a small area. To achieve a solid level of shit compression, squeeze your butt cheeks together for 30 minutes. Do something similar with the two hemispheres of your brain. Talk to people. Maybe that'll help. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is so funny. <laughs> I've never gained a thought in my life. Okay. You need to report your bad mission as soon as possible. Lieutenant said you can use a radio in his motor car. Run. 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 Yeah, the tutorial agent really does have pre-flight safety announcement. Bye, Angry! Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Uh, pick up the radio. The frequency tabler lights up, and a green button labeled Prime Line glows like a feline eye. And then you hear something. The soft purr of electrical kittens. 
Radio waves I cast far and wide kittens. over the metropolis. A woman's voice greets you through the static. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st Precinct here. I'm putting him on. Hi, Alice. This is the officer uh, <laughs> from the 41st Precinct speaking. Nice to meet you. This is Officer Alice Demetri, Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Um, could you connect me to the 41st Precinct? I have something I need to report. Just a second, officer. She puts you on hold, the static crackling softly like a bonfire. After a while, you hear an old man greet you from the radio. His rattly voice is oddly familiar. Ten two, ten five. This is 41st, uh, come in, over. Everyone is so French, I love it. A scrawny old man sits in a dusty cubicle, smoking with a large white rectangle sewn on his vest. In front of him is a box-shaped apparatus with an array of wires and antennas. The radio switchboard. Hi, this is me here. I work at your station. Then for what's your status over? Uh, it is not good. 1018, 1020, over. Uh... Can you talk like a human to me? These numbers mean nothing. State your message, sir. Over. I need to report my badge missing. Ten nine, repeat message. Over. My badge. I can't find it anywhere. Basically, it's gone. Ten four, message received. This is a very serious situation. I need to ten twenty two the captain. Over. Ten twenty two the captain. This sounds bad. Yeah. Bad and scary. Yeah, I feel that. Like being called to the headmaster's Ooh, office. Ooh, yeah, school. I feel that. Is it him? What does he want? Says he lost his badge and needs to report it. He what? He lost his badge? Who lost his badge? Dick fucking Mullen. Who do you think? It's Officer Dick Mullen from the bestseller Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. He says, fighting off laughter. Dick Mullen is not your name. It's the name of a fictional detective who would not lose his badge. Oh, we're being facetious. Defend yourself immediately. They're laughing at you. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, officer has lost his badge. Ha <laughs> ha, like I'm the first cop to ever misplace his badge. He says this has probably happened to other policemen before him and laughs uh, sarcastically. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Is he fucking kidding? The whole station's gonna be dicked for this. Uh oh. Satellite officer Vikmar is wondering if you might be joking and adds that this tarnishes the reputation of the entire station. Over. Oh god. Mullen dicked us. Can we just move on? I want to get it reported to be done with it. 10 4, I hear you, officer. I'm just going to make a note here that you are in pursuit of your misplaced badge. Over. Thank you, Jules. Fuck me! Mac, come here! You've got to hear this! Dick Mullen lost his badge! What's going on? Oh my god, Mac Torson. Super Cop here lost his badge. Stop it! He lost his what now? Oh my god. His badge. He lost his goddamn fucking badge. <laughs> Can we all just stop for a moment and saying he lost his badge for a moment? Yes, you two please stop saying he lost his badge. Why? Did he find it? The room at the other end of the line erupts in volcanic laughter. Sergeant Thorson was wondering if you found your badge yet. Over. Um, you don't have a comeback. Sorry. It's hard to think like this. <laughs> Say nothing. He's not replying. Looks like he's still looking for it. You can hear laughter in the background. This is so embarrassing! Enough with this, I have other things to discuss. Come again. I didn't get that. Over. The animated conversation in the back is making it difficult for him to hear you. No heights even for Captain Sober. Ask him. <laughs> Ask him if he's lost his gun too. Sergeant Orson wants to know if you lost your gun too. Over. Check your pockets. Check your... Holy fuck. You don't know where it is, do you? I don't have my gun? No. It's gone. It's not fucking on you. Oh! 10-9, come in, officer. Did you get my question? We were wondering about your gun. Over. Well. Well. 28% chance. Drama. Drama! 
Even before you can get the words out, yes. everything gets scrambled in your Good. brain. No, of course I didn't lose my fun. Gun! Fuck it! I didn't lose my gun! He says he didn't lose his gun. Or his fun, whatever that means. Ask him to describe it. His gun. Not his fun. Just the gun will do. <laughs> oh god, it's just like high school! Satellite officer McLean requests a description of your weapon. Over. Jules! <laughs> Jules, you're too old for this shit, stop! The fuck do you need a gun for? Look at the pythons on your arms. Yeah. You are a gun. I'm a gun! The biggest one in the world. I'm the biggest gun in the world! Oh, request a description, huh? We'll give him one. Describe the plasma gun. Uh... <laughs> For starters, it's massive. Got flared cooling vents along the front and hydrogen flasks sticking out too. Then I'm come again, please. Over. It's got a magnetic accelerator, accelerator, an arc that accelerates the energized ball of periwinkle blue hydrogen-based plasma near the light uh, to near night light speed. <sighs> In contact, it detonates with the power of a dying star erasing every living thing from existence. Oh, and did I mention it's dripping with sexy blue plasma? The officer is describing his genitalia in exaggerated terms. Over. Uh... Host in heaven. Did he lose his gun and his mind? Dear God, he lost his gun? Oh, oh my, I can't. <laughs> The man succumbs to laughter again. Well, at least some people are having really good days. This isn't really a laughing matter. Mac can face a giant of Coco Nur by himself, but this go here, I him piss his pants. <laughs> oh, I, I can't. Fuck. He lost his ass. He still got his wiener. I'm not going to ask him. <sighs> <laughs> Sergeant Dorson here is wondering if you are still in possession of your genitalia. Over. Now is a good time to say fuck and ass and so on. That'll make this all right. I left it at his mama's after it. Oh my god. Yes, I lost my wiener too. Just lay off, okay? He acknowledges your joke and asks you to lay off. Lay off. Lay off. Tell him we'll lay off when he retreats the goddamn police property that he has been entrusted with. Satellite officer. Uh, I, I heard him and I'm on it. Officer in pursuit of his firearm. They're static. Oh god, I. Uh. Officer. I don't want Kim to think I'm rude. I like over. Kim. <laughs> Kim's cool, and I think that he would think that that was bad. Uh, I'm in dire need of financial assistance. Ten four, I hear you. I don't have the authority to answer your request, but... <laughs> what does he want now? Oh no. He's asking for money. Oh no! Is he fucking kidding? I don't think he is. Don't give that asshole anything. He's just gonna drink it all. Right. Uh, that's a negative on the additional funds, sir. Over. Oh. It's paramount to the investigation that you grant me more money. He says it's important to the case. He isn't getting a red cent. You can tell him that. Request denied. Nothing is working. <sighs> okay, I hear you. No fun. Anything else, sir? Over. Uh, this might set on, but there's personal details I'd like to discuss. Uh, okay, then four, sir. I hear you. Relay your question. Over. Wait. Before you say anything stupid, think it through. What's there to think about? You're going to be looking at a straitjacket if you tell everyone you lost your memory. Oh. Be smart about this. Yeah. Ask if he's there alone. I know for a fact he is not. 10 four, sir. I'm not hearing your question. Um... Please refer to me with my full name in the future. Ten nine repeat message. I didn't get that, sir. Over. Uh, say my name. Sir, I will not have you talk to me in this manner. Please Over. just say my name, Jules. Uh, what? What is it? What can he possibly still want from us? 
He seems intoxicated and keeps asking me to call him by his name. Mullen's drunk and emotionally aggressive. That's new. <laughs> wrap it up. Don't indulge in his drunken antics. Yeah, let's wrap this up. That's all for now. Over and out. 18 kilometers to the south in the 41st Precinct's relay booth. A small crowd has gathered around communication officer Jules Oldboy Pudier. Around a dozen cops. Oh no. The small room is filled with cigarette smoke, a buzz with laughter when Officer Judith Minow enters. Her left arm is in bandages and her hair trimmed short. What is going on here? Did something happen? She asks. Jean Vicumère turns to her and says, What happened is my partner made contact. It's not good. He's lost his badge and his sidearm. He seemed confused, delirious even. He stops to think. Mac, the torso Torson, is finger fucking his fist, laughing hoarsely and apparently telling some dirty story to his partner, Chester McLean, near the entrance. Mac is gross! Yeah, Mullen was fucked, all right. Sounded fucking drunk to me. Yeah, Mac's right. This was some gnarly shit there. I mean, before he started begging for money, it was... Oh, God. Enough! None of this is funny. It's fucking sad. That's what it is. He's a cop. He's one of us, goddamn this. We must help him. Oh. Mino looks down at her neatly polished black shoes. There's a quiet firmness in her voice when she speaks. Yeah? How do you fucking plan to do that, huh? Get him off the drink? Go jogging with him in the morning and get him on car juice? He's a lost man. I just know we can't give up on him when he's at his weakest. He wouldn't. The crowd in the room has started fidgeting uncomfortably. Someone's trying to uh, slip out unnoticed. Mac, man the door. He gestures towards you him. You know what he told me? I don't want to get better. I want to get worse. Those were his words. He sighs heavily and turns to address the room. This shit does not leave this room. Not a word of this to the captain or anyone else. We'll give him a couple of days to pull his shit together. I guess I can hold off the report for a few days. Old boy lights another cigarette. Good. Okay, everybody. Nothing but a prank call here. We all got our laughs. Now get back to work. Far north, on the other side of the motorway, the officer quietly hunches with his hand in the motor carriage. <sighs> Kim, tell me about your car. You seem to love it. Tell me. This is the Coupris Kinema, my motor carriage. You can use the toolbox and the radio if you'd like. He nods at the cabin. Motor carriage, motor carriage. Something bad with a motor carriage. A dark lump rises in your throat. Do all policemen in the RCM have such cool motor carriages? The Cupris Motocar does provide most of our patrol vehicles, yes. Look around the cabin. In the cabin, you see a set of steer. Let's close the door. Okay, okay. Let's equip what well, we got our shit together. Ship compressor. Oh my god, they say it. That's a terrifying piece of Bizarre artwork. Scientific news from Rivershall West today where a police officer's shit has been observed at a pressure of around 495 gigadecimals. These metallic hydrogen levels of shit togetherness were thought to exist only at the center of collapsing stars, not law officials. It remains to be seen how long the shit singularity lasts. All endurance white checks unlocked. Ooh, learning cap for endurance is raised to four. That's cool. Inspect, pay for damages, track your badge and your gun. Can't we love, we lost our badge and our gun. Ugh, I'm running. I'm not running anymore. What's this? What's this? Goods from the lorry haphazardly littered the surroundings. What's this? What's this? There's magic in the air. What's this? What's this? A body's over there. Oh, the tie! 
I'm clicking a lot and it's not working. Running is now single clicking. Somehow there's like a toggle option. Close for winters. Please use main entrance. Oh. You lost your dick too. Tragic. Must have fallen off. Is it savoir faire? Oh no, we can't savoir faire. We're so low on savoir faire. Life's not savoir faire. There he still is, looking right through you Shit. with his white eyes. Shit compressed. The below is entirely dedicated to that. Ha ha ha! Again, the corpse laughs at you, pus dripping from its mouth. You will never be able to hold it in. It's always too much. Every time it happens, it gets worse and worse. There's nothing more to throw up now. All that's left is crying and convulsing dryly at the same time. Even though I got my shit compressed, how is it possible? I'm at a loss as well. I could swear your shit was together. I thought it was together too, Kim. Sometimes even that is not enough. Life is unfair. What do I do? Officer, you just need to be stronger. Learn to keep it in long enough for us to work. There's nothing else to do. Okay. You can open this white check again by going to your character sheet and spending a skill point to upgrade your endurance. Gain new skill points by- Relax. It's okay if you don't make it today. The bloated corpse isn't going anywhere. I can't believe- Well, Oh, I can't remove it. Oh, I have to wait until I level up to do it. Oh, do I have... Can I take off something? Anything gives me... Hmm. Mm hmm Yeah. You don't give me anything. Items. Handkerchief. Well, I guess let's look around! You have two endurance and managed to do it the third time? Life's not fair, I guess. Life's just not fair. Why do I walk now? I'd like to run. No. Yeah, single clicking is now running. And double clicking is now walking. Oh. Okay. Jump jams. A glossy magazine, most able-bodied men. This issue has uh, hosts a top 10 list. Oh no, they're much hunkier than you. Oh no! You shouldn't feel threatsome by their ha by handsome men. Don't be silly. You're right. Don't be silly. What's this say? Fritters. Who are you? Welcome to Ivashol. Racist lorry driver. Why are you addressing my partner like? Um, Mark isn't addressed to, it's addressed to the lieutenant. Don't Whoop. you welcome to Revachol me. This is easily the worst luck I've seen anyone get in this. Angry! Culture, Thank you. While your ancestors came to this island a mere 300 years ago. Every school of thought and government has failed in this city. Yeah. But I love it nonetheless. It belongs to me as much as it belongs to you. You tell him! It's men like you who keep Revachol divided, making it that much harder for everyone to climb out of this post-war limbo. Limbo? What's going on here? Oh, come on, man. I just said, uh, welcome to Revachol. Uh, it's a lorry driver thing. I know exactly what you meant. You think my kind doesn't belong here, that I should watch myself and behave. But you see, I'm an officer of the RCN. It's actually my job yeah. to make sure you behave. Yeah. 
I would advise you to remember that. Yeah. Silence. The air between them becomes tense. Your partner needs backup. Now's your moment to shine. Well, I think we all learned something here. I haven't learned anything I didn't know before. The Loryman shakes his head with indignation. The lieutenant exhales and resumes his regular calmness. Well, now that that's settled, we have a couple of questions. Whatever you say, officers. <laughs> I found out this mug in the trash. Yours? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. That's great. Look at that guy go. I haven't seen anything that funny in a while. Is it yours? God, man. <laughs> Thanks for that, but no, it's not mine. That didn't go at all how I expected. What was that argument all about? Uh, it's about biological determinism, natural law, the sorting of the races. Not the most popular topic nowadays, with a coalition in charge and all. You might want to change the topic. That is, bury your head under the sand like, come on cheap. Change the topic. The way he says it makes it almost sound like a threat. <laughs> oh! <laughs> so you're just a racist, makes sense. I'm not just racist. Look, <laughs> I've read books. <laughs> Science of racial theory has all been proved, okay. even if uh, some people don't want to accept it. Wow. People who've studied these things say that you and me are superior by design. Okay. So, uh, naturally, we Occidentals should be in charge. Obviously, you can see the merits in that. Right, I've already made up my mind. Do you want to hear it? Oh? Uh... Yeah, I'm not down with this. Why don't you go and fuck yourself? Don't push your luck, Rent. The man gives you a disgusted look and turns his attention elsewhere, ignoring your presence. Why couldn't I punch the man? Why could I only punch the, the tweaked out child? <laughs> didn't, didn't like that. Ooh, there's money on the ground over there. Ooh, I'll take it. I'll take this. This? A lorry stuck in the traffic jam. This big, heavy, grad-made machine is well kept for such an old machine. <laughs> there are witnesses? I don't care. I would punch him. The windows are clear. They've been recently washed. You can see a lorry man's cabin with personal belongings, stickers, insignia. What kind of stickers and insignia? The driver has adorned his space with a substantial collection of peculiar paraphernalia. Proclamations about honor, strength, and purity are glued to various panels. What about the back seat? The back end of the cabin has a small perch to sleep, large ashtrays. There are several suns and wheels sewn into the curtains. Racist nationalist paraphernalia. Not unusual team. in this part of town. This is our guy. You think this lorry belongs to our tough guy? Likely, yes. This guy's proud of who he is. Drapes it all over his machine. He was acting tough before. This probably scared him a bit. Who knows when it will come in handy. A slightly scared, racist lorry man. A foreign car kept in good condition. Well, I have a skill point, so I can up my endurance. The lorries probably stored fuel here. Now they store booze. Oh, that's a lot. That's a big person. Ooh, I hate him! Oh, it doesn't. Uh, it auto saves, right? But not always. Okay. Uh, endurance, endurance, endurance. We level up our endurance. Okay. Now we try to look at the body again.
this time. This time we gotta. There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse. As you breathe in, the odor comes over you. <gasps> it's a smell of the mind telling you to run and your stomach to ring itself empty. With your hands at your sides and your eyes squinting, you stand in it. Do they always do that? They do after seven days, yes. We are deep in decomposition here. Step closer. We do it to the to ourselves. for you is naked, but for a pair of underpants and enamel boots. His skin is greenish, marbled with decaying veins, and blotched by lividity. A fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. I thought it was a shirt. The cargo belt used to fasten him to the branch above appears industrial in strength. Inspect the boots. The material appears to be ceramic. Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them. Delicate and fragile, they feel alien to the world around you. Out of place somehow. Yeah. These are clearly not boots. They're armor. Possibly part of a larger set. These aren't just boots, are they? This is the armor he was stripped of. Indeed. Technically speaking, these are sabatons, not boots. What kind of armor is this exactly? Ceramic plate. Zirconium dioxide, most likely. This is where the make would be. Hmm. Under the heel. Fair weather. Fair weather model T500 VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. This is advanced stuff. Where's the rest of it? Scavenged by the locals? The materials look out of place here. It is. It's expensive. The lieutenant draws a line uh, in the condensation on the ceramic with his index finger. We've requested similar material for our tactical units for years now. The constabulary has deemed it too costly. In that time, we've lost six men to semi-automatics. How much are we talking? For a full set, about four years of wages. Ah, oh, that's a lot, I take it. As a wage, it's regrettably small. But for a piece of hardware, yes, that's a lot. How could this man afford such expensive hardware? That's for us to find out. My initial reports on the area suggest he was a security guard for the Harbor Company. So but that's just hearsay. That looks pretty advanced for a security I guard. I agree. This equipment is way beyond what a guard can afford. Knock on the boot. A small bell-like sound fills the air, like tapping on the side of a porcelain cup. Suddenly, your biceps coil up. Your elbow is sharp and cocked for a punch. <laughs> I don't want to punch his foot off. I don't want to punch his foot off. It sounds fragile. It's anything but. This material is a kinetic redistributor. It spreads kinetic punch. energy horizontally from plate to plate, dissipating it entirely. See? Faint organic lines cover the plates where they separate into smaller ones. These plates then divide into smaller plates until there are hundreds of them altogether. Like the scales of some ancient white monster, cracked and pearly. Pull the boot off. Pull the boot off. Pull the boot off. It's what my brain's telling me. Pull the boot off. This feels dangerous. Are you sure? Better not even try. The sabatons dangle off the man's decaying. The cadaver slowly twists. Inspect on the, the belt. Cargo belt. His torso covered in tattoos. The hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow, hard edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above, a sliding buckle ties the belt to the branch. Oh my, there's something on the belt. A familiar word that speaks to the thirst within you. What was that? A word? Ignore it. Ignore! It's hard, but somehow you manage not to see it. The corpse looks at you sideways from an unnatural angle. What kind of rope is this? Industrial strength. The can used for tying cargo to lorries. Like in a circus. When the circus leaves town, and they tie a black-spotted giraffe to the wall of a carry pen. 
Like in a harbor? <laughs> yes, it looks like they use whatever was on hand, paying no attention to not incriminating themselves. How'd they even get him up there? A noose is one of those things that's easier to use one way around. Did they climb up using the kid's ladder? That ladder can't carry a grown man. I didn't see any splintering either, did you? I think they lassoed the branch, then pulled on the belt to close the buckle. They sure wanted him to stay here. The polyester seems strong. It's not merely polyester. It's still reinforced. See these lines? Yes. This is where the wires run. Oh. I see rabbits for more than 20 strands. This makes getting him down much more problematic than I had assumed. Are we... are we assuming dock workers from the harbor did it? I'm still approaching this as a lynching, yes. Motivated by the ongoing strike. You? No. You feel like it was something else. But what? I feel like it was something else. Yes, it often is. This bed worries me. Back off and look the at the cadaver bells. hangs from the cargo Inspect belt. Inspect the tattoos. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. His corpse is marked by stars. What will mine be marked by? Alcohol and heartbreak. Thank you for that. Your fist clenches suddenly. It'll be riddled with disco! Decay is creeping on the tattoo. Already, most of the canvas that's holding it has darkened. Now, it disintegrates slowly, letting out a stink. Is this a microelectronic system? I have only a cursive knowledge of the science of cybernetics. I would not know if it were. But it's not quite complex enough, is it? We're missing something here. I agree. He pulls down the zipper of uh, his orange jacket. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminium from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears. Some sort of camera. What's that? A true sunshine. Mini. Ooh. Shit, Kuno! What the fuck is that? I should have punched that frickin' kid. An instant color camera. He produces two metal clap metal capped ampules and clicks them in place on the side of the apparatus. A thin slot shines there. This is the first time he openly acknowledges the kid's existence. Hmm. I have only two ampules, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. He points the camera at the corpse peering into it. The lens needs adjusting, then a sound, a shrill flash. Followed by the breaking of a small ampoule of glass, you see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper. That's cool. Rolling out. This whole game is done in this style. Oh, theory! Theory time! We're going over pictures, memories. We're going through them. That's why the game looks like this. In case we need it. Cool machine. Yes, it is pretty cool, isn't it? What do we need this photo, photo for? It contains insight to the victim's person. By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter, to us. Someone should decipher it. We need to show it around. <laughs> Can I have it? I should look at it later without the corpse smell. Sure. Just don't lose it. He hands you the piece of rolled up photo paper. It's no larger than a pack of cigarettes. The glossy eyed corpse looks by, his mouth mute and his skin Look as him colorful. in the eye. His eyes are milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from their sockets. It's really warm there in here. There is no one home, just subaquatic terrors there. I'm gonna crack open a door cause it's really hot. The door is closed. <clears throat> Dark brown hair grows on his head. His face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. Gross. The death's head grin has passed. 
What remains is an unrecognizable mess. Oh, Travis. Underneath the curdled meat, there is an expression. Not carried on his features, but below, inside. An expression of pleasure. This man was experiencing joy at the moment of his death. Tell me, who are you, dead man? I'm gone. Where have you gone? Into the wild pile yonder. Where is that? In the past. Way out in the west. I can see you're gone, but who are you? I'm a joke. Look at me. You are now, but who were you when you were alive? A killer. A motherfucker. And a killer. A killer. Takes one to know one. I have another question for you. Go ahead, Kobo. Why were you feeling pleasure when you died? Maybe I was getting my rocks off. First, do you have to speak like that? What dialect is it anyways? It's a mishmash, Copabolo. You think I'm Messinian, don't you? For you, this is how people from Messina speak like. I'm not even sure what Messina is. Well, I'm not from Messina, am I? My hair is too light a shade of brown. Trust your inner racist. What, are you racist now too? Is everyone racist? You think I am. You think I was a racist because this lump looks military and has tattoos. That's called profiling. Whoa. So you were feeling sexual arousal when they were hanging you? Do I look like an erotic auto-asphyxiation type to you? What is auto- or what is erotic auto-asphyxiation? Captain Copadromo. I fear we are drifting away. Fixating on sexuality again. Let's go with a simpler question. What's happening? What do you mean? I'm talking to you. It's the power of your... Oh, black frothy liquid starts bubbling from his li on his lips. Imagination. <sighs> Go ahead. Ask me more questions. You fucking love questions. Why do I love questions so much? Because you're a copperoony. I am. Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? Give me a comical amount of questions. Coming right up, Copper Rooney Rooney. This is getting up beat now. Is my name Rooney? Fuck no. You're no Rooney. Of course not. The name is Raphael Ambrosius Costol. Listen to yourself. You're not a Raphael anything. You're probably just Harry or something. That's right. Harry. I feel like I have been getting a lot of Harry lately. You might be onto something there. Why do I feel like I've forgotten something terrible? Because you have. Who killed you? Love did me in Provocopo. It was love all along. Can you ask me a question? Sure, Lobo. I can ask you a question. Why are you doing this? What? Looking at my face, motionless. Looking into my eyes, standing here. Why are you investigating my murder? Maybe this will lead to something? Something indescribable? Unforeseen? Miraculous? <sighs> The clown lips on the corpse appear to smile. The face rotates before you slowly. Something is on its way. Something hidden. It's coming. A miracle from the northwest. And it's almost here. You can feel it in the air, on your hands. The cold spring air smoothing them over. Was it Judy? I forget, I forget her name. She was nice to me. Enough. Come back later, Corporal. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my 
Memento Mori features, if possible, also see me in your dreams. That wasn't written. That wasn't written there. That wasn't written down. That wasn't written. He just said that. Uh, going to take a step back. As you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink. Observe. Only the lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue. His fatted hands, thighs, and his neck, just above the noose. The rest of the corpse appears dark green in the cold spring air. Hmm. Stop and relax the your eyes. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt. His torso covered... How do we do sure this? we finish the preliminary examination of the cadaver? We might miss some of these things once he's done. Step back and have another look first. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt. His torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. I have something I need to know, corpse man. Of course. You have questions, don't you? The power of your imagination is at your service. I hate you, you stink, and you're boring. Do I remind you of someone? The deep sea creature. No, not quite. Be fair now. You don't remind me of anyone. Sure I do. You just don't want to admit it. Okay, do let's I do the what? We'll do this, we'll do this. Someone? You sure are good out of that one? Coppellini. Okay, no. Come back later, Coppo. Yeah. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori fi. The steel reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters, but I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, there's the question of cutting it. Uh, we could saw off the branch. Climb up there and saw the branch? Yeah, it seems dangerous. There has to be a less risky way, with less falling down of trees. Uh... Maybe we could ask for help. I was really hoping we wouldn't. The union appeared to be suspect I know. in this case. It seems like a dangerous route to go down. You're right, Kim. Confirmed. It's unsafe. Yeah, let's reconsider. But what other options? The corpse twists on the belt like chicken on a skewer. Shoot? With what gun, Ludwig? These guns? They don't shoot. Uh, we'll try. Yeah! Bang, bang, time, pig! Shoot his head off! How? Just shoot the belt. The bullet will break it. It absolutely will not, officer. That's not how physics work. It will maybe cut one thread loose. Yeah, now we're talking. Entertain a Kuno with some shit. They'll miss. The pigs will miss Kuno. The lieutenant is undecided. On one hand, he wants to shoot some gun. On the other, it's an awfully stupid idea. Silence. <laughs> with his elbow sharp. Oh my God, he's doing it! Unzips his jacket and produces a lightweight <laughs> firearm. He drops a paper cartridge in the barrel, separates the scouring stick, and gives the cartridge five tucks. He then steps back and assumes the fellow's desk position, taking aim. The corner of his eye twitches. His finger is on the trigger. Easy does it, partner. He's gonna fucking me! The kid's voice is drowned in a shrill blast that echoes off the walls of the surrounding tenements. A cloud of smoke slowly parts in the air as the lieutenant steps back and says to himself, God damn it. He feels bad about it, about his eyes mostly, just having bad eyesight, probably from a young age. Whatever you do, do not console him. Do not? Fucking idiot! Mook about asshole! Kuno could have hit it easy, but then Kuno is not fucking handicapped, is he? I'm going to console him. It's okay, man. Kuno's sorry too. Kuno feels sorry for the Beano clad. 
The lieutenant doesn't say a word, just looks at the gun in his hand. What now? I have to say, it's beginning to look unlikely we can get him down without assistance. Shoulda, shoulda socked that kid. Uh, should I try? It's bad as it is, us shooting firearms like punks. He pauses, then shrugs and proceeds to load the pistolet. Go ahead, I'm not stopping you. Just don't lose it. <laughs> I only have one gun! This is the sorriest pair of pigs Kuno's ever seen. Do we shoot the children? Yeah, take it, you fucking banani boyka! Take it and shoot yourself in the mouth! Feel the weight first. The cold piece of bakelite and gunmetal is surprisingly light. Your fingers fit right through the guard, instinctively resting on the trigger. That's not good trigger discipline. The fuck are you waiting for, Kuno? Tell him to shoot himself in the mouth! Kuno is silent. Aggression gathers in the air. The trigger feels delicate and ready to break under your fingers. The buckle comes into focus in your sights. You stand with your feet planted firmly in the ground and your left hand supporting your gun arm. Why don't you just shoot yourself in your f mouth? At least you won't miss. Point the gun. <laughs> Close your left eye first. Your field of view narrows. The branch slowly moves, becoming entirely two-dimensional. The metal buckle glimmers, catching the noon light as the corpse slowly rotates. Look, he's crying. You gonna cry now, fucking faggoty? I had to see what that word was. I was like, what the hell? Yeah, now's my chance. 17%? We got this. Uh. A plume of smoke erupts from the barrel. Your hand goes numb from the explosion. With your ears still ringing, you missed the belt, but hit the corpse straight in the chest. Bits of ribcage protrude from the skin. No blood, only a murky sludge dripping down his belly. The sudden stink makes your eyes water. Oh my god, he's gonna fucking cry! I knew it! What a mulco! Start crying. I'm sensitive. It feels dry. Nothing comes out of you as you stretch and bend your face into a crying shape. You're too furious to cry, apparently. Try harder. Try really hard to cry. The lieutenant watches you jerk some tears. Your shoulders shaking and your eyes dry. The gun begins to slip from your fingers. You malolda. The f can't even cry. The lieutenant gently picks his gun from your hand and holsters it. We still need to get him down somehow. But hell! The bad way. The way I didn't want us to. <sighs> By asking the harbor for help. They have the tools and the men. If they put him up there, they can take him down too. But won't it be dangerous? To ask the suspects for help with the victim's body? To be indebted to Evrat Claire? Very much, yes. Which is why I would have preferred us to handle this ourselves. Clearly, we can't. Suck my dick, bitches! <laughs> <laughs> Who's Everett Clare? The leader of the Union. A dangerous and corrupt man, from what I hear. You don't want to owe him much. Yeah? Don't go being someone else's bitches. You're Kuno's bitches. How do we get inside the harbor? I love having the peanut gallery. From the gates, by negotiating or fighting. I'm unenthusiastic about fighting. Or we can try to find some secret third path. It's an ugly door. To the gates. Let's fight, I say. Let's do it. Did I just kind of just click this? Yes, that's what that means. Damn it! What do I have in here? The victim's tattoos. The photo of the hanged man. Ask arounds for their meanings. Ask for help. The photos. Interact. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso of the hanged man. From the right shoulder, 
to the solar plexus. <laughs> Each time the lines intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. It almost looks like the electronic patterns inside a radio computer or an old filament memory. What is the but meaning of this not tattoo? Quite for you to discover. You've gotten as far as you will without assistance. Someone close to the victim might know. Why? Um, Put the photo away. This is cool. This is a cool game. Someone close to the victim. Someone close to the victim. I'm gonna talk to you. Looking for something odd? Come to tell me to fuck off again? What are you hauling? Oh, not much anymore. I'm here to pick up some cargo, but uh, the dock workers are on strike, so uh, it's a sit and wait on your ass situation. What kind of cargo? Apples. Apples? Yeah, apples. I take it you had other... He's given you the runaround. Let's be honest, you were bested. We're done for now. I'm just failing all of my checks. It's nice in here. Yellow roses, dozens of them, tulips too. A melancholy pop song plays on the radio. You see several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf beneath a display of croissants and juice bottles. The raincoats are transparent, except for the big Fritta slogan on the back. What's that? What is what? Um, it's a raincoat. If you want to buy one, then it's only for Royale. I don't have the money. What's this? The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says, one bottle equals 10 cents. What is this? Hmm? Oh, that's the tear machine. Yes, but what is it? It's a machine for tear. You know, you find tear outside, like bottles or whatever, and put it in the machine. <gasps> then it gives you money. I see. And how do I pick up tear for the tear machine? You need a bag, I guess. We used to have some, but Ugh! we gave them all out. So feel free to use it if you find a bag, though. I'm sure there are some out there somewhere. Well, that's good to know. I have to make a whole bunch of money before this evening arrives. A colorful display of cigarettes and alcohol bottles line the shop wall, inviting you closer. Uh oh. There, in that dark green glass, all in vain. This is the not... great flowing river of warmth, wine, alcohol, beer, alcohol, love. Alcohol. This is not a good place for a recovering um, addict. Guess not, no. Good thing you're an unrecovering alcoholic then. Oh, good thing. I'm obliged to inform you that both alcohol and cigarettes damage your health. Thank you. I guess you already know that. We're at 14, 14, uh, 8 o'clock. Leave. What's this? A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles, nasal sprays, and blister packs. They all bear the Saint Baptiste Pharmaceutics Hi, logo. I am Super Potato. Um, just ask me if you need anything from Saint Baptiste. We don't stock prescription meds, but we do have Nosafed, Duramine, Magnesium, and Hypnogamma. Oh, thank you. We we did shoot up a body. Arrête. Oh man. I guess it's time to say goodbye for the day. It's been like three and a half hours now. Oh, it's so good. Loading times are quick quick on the switch. They're so long. That's too bad that it's long on the switch. Don't be afraid to say weird things. People are more forgiving of pers of 
or to persons in power, like police officers. Pick dialogue options that begin with hold on or wait to gain additional information. The map and tab will, uh, uh, oh, that's cool. Who, so who done it? I don't know who done it. I don't know yet. Oh, this is really fun. I can't wait to discover more. We have problems though. It was Kuno. It was Kuno. The art style is gorgeous. All this right here. Oh, you can't see it. All this right here. Gorgeous. It's anti-Bethesda design. You've done a lot. It somehow only walked like one block. I know. I was like, how, like when I was playing, I'm like, is this the whole game? Just discovering like who the, the this person is? You saw a, a guy who looked like an older version of me? Ooh, me in my elder years? Who was the man and why was it the necktie? I wish I got that necktie. It was my friend. Did you print a full cardboard cut it? Yeah, it was requested by 20 Uno. And so we did it. And now I get to discover who you are, Kim. And I already love you a lot. <laughs> You're just so calm. It's such a cool plot reason to scramble your stats. Literal amnesia. Oh, really good. Well, we'll be back tomorrow at the same time with more of this. I'm very excited. It may have Mayor Nightman uh, have been a part of your campaign to make this happen. Well, thank you, 20 Uno. It worked. It worked. Kim has literally has done nothing wrong I, I, so far. It's just been very kind, very patient with our giant drunk baby ass. Okay. Well, I will be back tomorrow with more Disco Elysium. Disco. Oh, wait. We have we have to do th uh, thumbnail faces. What what would be a good thumbnail face for the stream tomorrow? Thanks for having me in the character creators. Thanks for being there for the character creation, Zero. It's great. It's great. Let's so now we got to we got to figure out what we want to do. What, what what kind of face would be good for for <laughs> reaching for the tie? Like, <laughs> make the same face your character does. Am I doing it? Okay, good. We got it. We got it. We got it. That's it. That's good. We got it. We got it. Thank you, chat, for helping. I'm going to give you waffles now. And then we're going to go. Okay. Bye. I love you. Bye. Bye.